All right, all right, all right. Let's go. Let's go. Where we at? Where we at? Let me get everything going on my end. Let me start recording. Let me get everything ready. What's going on, man? Let's get this thing going. Let's get it going. Let's get it cracking. Waiting on everybody to come on in the room. Let's get it. How's everybody living? Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope the start of your week is good. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody pop on through. A lot of stuff we're going to cover tonight. It's going to be a doozy. We're going to chop it up. Then we're going to we're going to take some calls shortly. Waiting on everybody to pack on in. We already got 200 people within the first 10 seconds. So that's that that looks like it's going to be a full house tonight. We got over 200 people in the first 10 seconds and people are piling in very quickly. Everybody give the room a retweet. Let everybody know that we are live right now, live from Los Angeles. That's where I am, ladies and gentlemen, and the weather's getting better. It's getting cooler out here. Thank goodness. It's about time we got some cool weather so I can put on some clothes and not walk around in Crocs and shorts. But we in here. Everybody come on in. Everybody come on in. We got a lot to talk about. Before we get started, let's do another RIP to the legendary Tito Jackson. From the Jackson 5, from the Jackson Group, our brother passed yesterday. I talked about it on my um, live YouTube show. And um, from what I understand, he he was 70 years old. They're saying he might have had a heart attack. He was traveling from New Mexico. So he was, I don't know where he was traveling. He was going somewhere. Uh, And his sons follow me. Shout out to um, Todd and those guys. Man, they follow me and my condolences to the family. Um, those are good kids, man, good guys. And um I'd like to see when a memorial is for our brother Tito. I would like to see I would like to see when there's a memorial for Frankie Beverly too. I really want to go to a Frankie Beverly memorial. I would really like to see that pop off. But um anyway, let's get right to the nitty-gritty. For those who don't know, and you should know if you're on social media, Diddy, man, they got Diddy. What they they took him into federal custody. They got Diddy, put him in federal custody. Now, they've been talking about Diddy being arrested in September. This has been kicked around for a minute, so people kind of knew. It's not really a surprise to a lot of people. Folks have been saying that Diddy was going to get arrested in September. They were building the case, getting all that together after those raids on his spot in um, L.A., and I think they, I want to say they raided his spot in Miami. So people knew some charges were going to come. They were supposed to, from what I understand, um, take him into custody tomorrow, but they did it a day early. So he anticipated being taken into custody. They got him in Manhattan. Um, I don't know what the charges are. We don't know. It's probably some kind of RICO which we knew is it's going to be some kind of RICO charge. And, you know, you got a lot of people who was associated with them. They see the lawsuits popping, so they're putting their dibs in. Uh, what's the girl from um, um, the Dirty Money? I think that was his group, the the Dawn girl. She, she said there was something going on and there was some kind of abuse or whatever. So she put her bid in for some of that lawsuit money. So, you know, when it rains, it pours. When it rains, it pours. But yeah, it's um, it's it looks like it's a wrap for Diddy right now. It's a wrap. They they made sure they get the media on their side. The feds really locked this case up. They got a lot of people with lawsuits floating around out here. They had that video of Diddy at the hotel that they've been sitting on. You better believe they were sitting on that video for a minute where he was um stomping down on Cassie. So, yeah, they they were planning on um, putting it in on him. And, you know, they're they're cashing that in. So, you know, Diddy, when they raided him, some people are saying that they might have gotten some tapes or something. Because Diddy, he's been around a lot of powerful um, and influential people. So he knows some things. He's seen some things. 
There's some tapes floating around somewhere, so no telling what they're trying to shut him up about. But we got to understand something else when it comes to this. You know, they they always they're gonna make an example out of um, certain folks. They always gotta. This is this is like a form of buck breaking. They always got to do this. Now we we better understand how the game works. Um, whether you think the the arrest and the indictments are justified or not, we do know that. They do make examples out of us, and they do it for a reason. See, the white supremacist society, they're about to be a minority pretty soon, so they really got to buck break one of the big Negroes in order to keep everybody else in line. Or they got to make an example. They got to buck break you publicly. Same thing they did on the plantations. They get the big physically powerful buck and, you know, whoop on him and sodomize him and do all types of weird things to him in order to strike fear in the rest of the plantation. They just do that on a massive scale now. And you have to understand how white supremacy works. This ain't about innocent or guilt. We're just talking about how white supremacist society works. Because look, there's a lot of innocent and well, there's a lot of guilty white entertainers as well. They don't, they don't give them this type of treatment. You know, they got a really, really go deep, deep and heavy with us. And that's for a reason. And that's why you keep your nose clean. You try to be on that Denzel thing. Stay at home with your wife. Just, you know, don't try to be all out there freaking off with all these people because they keep tabs on you. So you better learn how to sit your ass down somewhere. You understand? And stop trying to do the most out here because they keep tabs. And when you get to a certain level of money, they're going to cash that back in and use all of your debauchery against you, you see. So we, there's some life lessons to be learned here as black people. But the, the message they want to send, listen, when you get to that billionaire status as a black person. Or even a multimillionaire status where you're making hundreds of millions of dollars. The name of the game is to not let you pass that thing down. They're going to put you in a position where you cannot pass down no generational wealth. Y'all look around and see some of the black people that got into that hundred million dollar range. Look at that. Just to, this is, come on, let's look at history. They weren't, most of them weren't able to pass down that wealth. I want y'all to, this is not a coincidence. And this goes all the way back when folks started first, when black folks started making big money, going back to Sam Cooke. When Sam Cooke was making power moves in the 60s, trying to own his masters and own his own record label, they were warning him, don't do that. The mafia was warning him. Sammy Davis Jr. and people like that were pulling him to the side saying, hey, man, you there's some powerful people who don't like what you're doing out here. And then we saw what happened to him. His, his death is still somewhat of a mystery. That always happens when we start making big money. They make sure it's not passed down generationally. And if you get that money, they make sure that you can't pass it down. Like Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah's in that that billionaire range. She doesn't have any offspring, so she's not that much of a threat, but they still keep her on a leash to a certain degree. Like, hell, don't, don't act funny, because we don't want you passing no money down to Stedman or nobody. Look at our entertainers. Look at Prince. Look at Prince. When he got out of here, you know, the, the family's still fighting over where that money is going to go. Nobody knows where his, his money, the, the masters, all that stuff. Nobody knows where all that stuff is. It's always up in the air. Look at Michael Jackson. The Jackson family, they're, they're fighting now over the estate and Michael Jackson's assets. They're still going back and forth over that now. And Blanket and Paris and all of them is some real weird up in the air stuff as far as that's concerned. And the uh, Catherine, the mother, from what I understand, they're trying to shut her out of some of that, um, some of the estate of Michael's. You understand? So it's it's very interesting how when it comes to us passing down wealth, there's always something that comes in and puts a wrench in it. Yeah. Like our good brother Bill Cosby, 
we see what they're doing. And his his only son, Ennis, you know, his Ennis was killed back in the 90s. And they can look at all these weird charges that they still try to throw on Bill Cosby trying to fleece his money. So yeah, this happens very, very often. R. Kelly is another one. R. Kelly, you know, his he wasn't able to pass down all of those hits. They sit here and let you accumulate hits and hits and hits and let you engage in debauchery long enough to keep producing them hits. And when them hits slow up, and they say, uh-oh, now it's time to cash that check in. Now it's time to go ahead and get all your residuals. Now it's time to get all of that stuff we allowed you to get. We're going to get it back. Yeah. Brother Russell Simmons, another one. And all that, those hundreds of millions he generated, they ain't letting, you're not passing that down. No, no, no. You are not passing that down nowhere. See, the white supremacists, they're real funny style about us passing down generational wealth. Now, Diddy, he's a technically a billionaire, but they're not, they're not going to let him pass that down. Yeah, they about to scrape all that money up out of them. This is a money grab, too. Let's, let's be real. This ain't really about no justice. This is about a money grab. They're going to grab all of those hundreds of millions of dollars and divvy it up. Yeah? Let me get Sir Major in the building real quick. Sir Major, what's up, brother? Sir Major in the building. What's going on, fam? Hello, Sir so Tariq, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Tariq? Yeah, I can hear you. Can Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Let's try it again. Okay, we'll try it again. Yeah, I could hear him. But he could not hear me. Let's try it again. Let me try it again. Um, let me see if his phone is working. What's up, Juicy Genius? I see you down there. Okay, Sir Major, let's try one more time. All right, let's try it again, Sir Major. I don't know what the heck is going on, but I appreciate you bringing me up. Hey, man, this is this is uh this is not anything you know for folks to be celebrating that they got one of um, you know somebody who's FBA. The you know we don't know if what the rumors are, what the allegations are. We don't know what the charges are, right? And mm -hmm. so just like white folks do everything in their power to preserve and protect whiteness and white supremacy, we do the same thing. Um, yeah. Let's not rush to judgment, as they tell us, right? Yeah. Especially when they kill black people, they tell us, well, that's 30 seconds of a video. Well, we don't know what the charges are. Let's calm down and wait till everything comes out. So I, I recommend that we do this. But if we're going to be speculating, here are my thoughts. I believe that Diddy knew at some point year about a year ago that this was coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe that when he remember he changed his name to Brother Love. Yeah. He started changing his public image. Um, you know, he uh gave the publishing back to artists who he allegedly took um, you know, to took advantage of allegedly. Right. Um, I think that he knew at this point I need to start changing my public image because Diddy is a bad boy. I mean, he's been misbehaving. I mean, he walked up in people's studios, cussed about, he threatened um, allegedly, in these yeah. reports that I read, how he threatened people over at the source and Vibe magazines, things of that nature. Um, so here's the other thing that I want to say. I think that Diddy, um, I think that the feds definitely got some tapes out of his house. Oh, yeah. If, if he's smart, he sent some tapes overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, that he can pull out for a rainy day. And, and oh, I think yeah. he's giving clear instructions to whoever uh, may have access to those videos to, to release those in case, you know, he gets jammed up. Mm -hmm. I also believe that this is definitely coming from the top. This is not just because Diddy bought or was trying to sue this liquor company and trying to get, you know, what's rightfully his. This is coming down from the top. Why? I'm not really sure of. Um, I think he got too big for his britches. At least that's how they perceived it to be. Um, and he probably didn't play well in the sandbox with other people because oh, yeah. when you're getting that FU money, you can kind of do what you want to do. Um, so there's that. Um, now, it's been rumored that there's going to be some other people kind of uh, as a catch-all, that they're, they, they may be using Diddy as a pawn to really go after other people. So you use Diddy and his mess to go after people like, uh, L.A. Reid or go after maybe Russell Simmons and things of that nature yeah. uh, or to go after Jay-Z. Now, I've been hearing Jay-Z a lot, but we do know that Beyonce just gave $4 million, I'm going to highlight this, to Kamala Harris. Mm. And 
that could have been a play like, yo, don't come out to my husband. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's just a little conspiracy. I wanted to offer that. Thank yeah. You. Oh, my man, thank you. Yeah, man. So, you, you know, I, I wonder if they're going to get Diddy in there and try to rattle him and get him to start spilling the beans on folks. But Diddy's the big fish, though. So, you know, that they already got a big fish. So I don't know if they need to get smaller fries. They already got the big fish. And again, they sat on those videotapes, like that tape of the at the Beverly Hotel where he was stomping and dragging Cassie. Well, they were sitting on that. Boy, that didn't come out of nowhere. They sat on that thing for years. That was from like a decade ago. They sat on that. Yeah, these people, they sit on stuff and just wait for the right time. You know, they know, they know what's going on. When you're a high profile person, your actions and stuff, you know, people know what you got going on. They keep tabs on you. They keep dibs on you. They know what you're doing. And that's what it is. Let me see. Let's get um Marcel Lovett. Marcel Lovett, hop in, man. Marcel Lovett, hop in. Yo, can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, bro? All right, I want to preface this by saying this. Um, I used to be a part of the, the Mandel's Fear stuff, but I distanced myself because I realized how racist they are, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, I, um, I, I'm FBA, first of all, but I got a little problem with reparations, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think, personally, I don't think I should get it or even you. I think our, our, like our, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren should get it because... I think we got too many black folks who uh who want to live amongst white folks. They want to spend money on stupid stuff like Dodge and clothes. I know we got we got some phenomenal black folks who want to do great stuff, but I just think we got too many people who are gonna fuck it up. You know what I mean? So why would we give the money? We give it to our grandkids. No, I think our grandchildren, like when they got a different mentality, I think people like like you. Oh, you like fifty five, right? Oh yeah, I'm seventy years old. I'm I'm very old. I was yeah. Just... You you old as hell. So like you <laughs> like you personally like you not no sambo. You not no cool not like that. But most black folks like they going to live amongst white folks. They going to spend money on stupid stuff. Like not I'm not gonna say most, but I think a good amount of them are gonna like mess the money up, and it's gonna be pointless in the okay. future. Why not let them mess? It? They can if that's their prerogative to mess the money up. Let them mess the money up. It's their money. But we're going to be back in the same boat in, like, another 30 years. I think we got to change the mentality first of a lot of black folks. Change the mentality how? Like, I think we got, I don't think a lot of us is going to, like, I think a lot of us going to do stupid stuff, like buy a bunch of clothes and, like, clo- like cars. You okay, what I mean? like, what's wrong with that? Because that's not going to circulate. All right, take a look at, like, the reparations with, like, the, J- the Japanese, right? Nobody. The Japanese. Nobody told them what to do with their money, by the way. No, no, no. Right. You're right. But the thing about them, right? Like they hold, like if you ever look at them, they all drive Japanese made cars. They all shop in Japanese uh, grocery stores. They wear Japanese made clothes. Like they got an instinct. So they naturally circulate that money. They send it back to Japan. Like us, we just going to give it to white folks. Like not, not all of us, of course, like a lot of us going to start businesses, do something great with that. But I'm talking about the people that's going to mess it up that got white wives and you know what I mean? Well, the thing is we got a society where we live among white people and white people own a lot of the businesses here. Whereas in Japan, they have their own businesses. There are the Japanese people. We live in BS though, because a lot of the Japanese is even a smaller population than us. And they don't spend money like that, like on white people and other businesses. They got they, Japanese made cars, stores. They do. They spend money on all types of stuff. Yeah, everybody shop at Target, which is white owned. But I'm saying they got a foundation to where it's like they circulate money in their own community. I think our mentality, like even me, I ain't no sambo, I ain't no coon, nothing like that. Like I said, but I just feel like, like deep down, I'm going to end up doing stupid stuff and you yeah. know spending. You're projecting what you're going to do onto other people. Because, listen, I know other people, if they get reparations money, they're going to start businesses. They're going to do... No, I am too. I'm into the stock market. I love stocks. I'm going to do great things with that. But I'm saying, at the end of the day, I still got Bank of America. 
You know what I mean? Maybe I am projecting a little bit, but a lot of black people got Bank of America, which is a white-owned bank. You know what I mean? Like, we naturally just got that proclivity to support white business. It's instilled in us. But all of us ain't on that. Yeah, not that, all of us, but it's a large majority of us that's going to do the same thing. The same way. We just need to get everybody what's deserved. We're owed a debt. If some people get that money and do great things with it, they do great things with it. They give Native Americans, the red ones, they get checks all the time. Many of them on the reservations drunk as hell. Some of them are, <laughs> some of them, some of them flip that money and do great things. Nobody sits there and questions where the money is going to go when it goes to them. They only want to play that game with us. Uh, if I look, if we get reparations and somebody wants to go smoke a pipe or whatever, let them smoke that pipe. No, I, I, I ain't trying to play that game with us. I'm just trying to have like a, a n words fighting like amongst each other. You know, I actually um. Game. That, that, y'all got to stop that that sambo projecting, dude. Y'all, you're projecting your own mentality to other black people. Black people know what to do with money. When we get the money we're supposed to get, we know what to do with it. We know what to do. We know how to flip it. We know how to do good things with it. See, this is uh, why. Now, where, where's your family from? You say you have. Been... Oh my god, yo. No, yo, where's I do. No, he's <laughs> gonna ask me this. Where's your family from, bro? Listen, I. I'm where's a your black... family? from wait i'm from philadelphia but where's your family from there's a there's a, a an like my ancestors there's an immigrant in your family who's no in listen it's not listen my great grandma she was 99 years old she died last year i would always ask her i said grandma what part of africa are we from so you like we ain't no africans my grandma was a dark-skinned indian woman uh, okay. and i thought there's a tether in your family somewhere, brother, because they didn't pass the tether gene down to you. Mm -mm. No, I'm telling you, it's really not. I knew you was going to ask me this, but I'm... Philly? You're from Philly? Yeah. Okay. And when I looked at my... I took an ancestry DNA test, and it said South Carolina, and but I don't have no nothing Caribbean or nothing like from the Africa or whatever. Like, I'm black American. Man, I, it sound, I don't know. I don't know. I'm questioning that. Zosa, Zosa, hop in. Good day, uh, brother Tariq. How are you? How's it? Good day, brother. Okay, I'm, am I pronouncing your name right, sir? Hausa? Is it Hausa? Uh, Kosa, sir. Zosa, okay, I was right the first time. Okay, what's going on, man? Hey, good day, brother. Um, I've been a fan. Um, I'm from South Africa. Um, I remember you came in 2018 in Cape Town. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've been watching your your series called Maroon. Um, so just want to say um, thank you so much for giving us insight about the white supremacy. Since you also have have that type of battle here, you know what I mean. Um, just want to say um, keep on exposing it, and um, I appreciate a lot of your work. I appreciate. Yeah. It. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the other guy, I don't think. I, I I don't know. I don't think this guy is full FBA with that kind of mindset. We just going to mess the money up. We just going to get white women's in. Okay. Okay. How many black folks you really been around, bro? Because I know some black folks, some of you guys in here, you get that extra money. Y'all going to do phenomenal things with it. See, this is why y'all better change your circles out here. Who y'all hanging around? Y'all hanging around Dusty's. I don't hang around Dusty's. What's up, EJ? Brother EJ, what's up, fam? How you doing, player? I'm good. How are you, sir? Yeah, man. That last dude was eating biscuit crumbs off the ground, man. If you don't want your money, my nigga, I will give you my address right now. You can send your reparations money to me, and we can split it amongst the family. Everybody everybody already know that if you ain't going to do nothing with the money, you might as well not get it. Reparations is a debt that's old to our people. And if you don't want to get down for it, man, then I'm just questioning where your lineage is from. And even if you are for FBA, there is that Coon, Sambo, Jim Clyburn mentality that a lot of uh, people in our community have been indoctrinated with for generations. See, this go back to the house nigga and the field nigga mentality. See, these niggas in the field been getting jealous of the people in the house. And some of these house niggas been getting pe jealous for the people in the field because a lot of these people ain't built like that when you are here talking about black empowerment. So 
you know, the moral of the story is that dude right there ain't certified. He's just real bitch made. But I do want to talk about this whole Diddy situation, man. I think yep. it's the chickens coming home to roost. This was really bound to happen. And we're going to see about 8,500 Gene Deal videos on the order dialogue in about <laughs> the next 5.3 seconds. But oh, that's yeah. all I want to say, brother. Keep doing your thing, player. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. When it comes to us getting something, all of a sudden we all got to we got to act right. We got to have a certain mindset. Damn all that. Damn all that. We, we need our paper. Ain't no other group required to do all of this other stuff in order to get the right compensation. I don't want to hear none of that stuff. When they let people over here from the, the border, wherever they're hopping over fences from, Ain't nobody sitting up here talking about the mindset they should have. They come over here, criminals, murderers, sexual deviants, all types of people coming over here. They ain't questioning nobody. They're giving them EBT cards and resources. They're giving all types of lunatics money who come over the damn border. You ain't giving them no damn requirements. These people come over here with no paperwork, nothing. You don't know what they did down in South America somewhere. You have no idea what these people are doing. They come over here and there's the, a blank check waiting on them. But with us, in order for us to get some money, well, we all got to go to church every Wednesday. We got to take a business school and a business class. And then we got to uh, come up with a way of figuring out where the money is going to go and how we're going to spend it and how much and are we going to have an allowance and let's put it into an ERA and let's put it into a little social security fund and let's put it's all of this stuff. We got in the hell no. Give us our damn money. Give us our damn money. Give, uh, give people their money. I don't give a damn what they want to do with it. Give these brothers their money. Give the sisters their money. If one of these dudes out here gets his reparations check and he wants to trick it off on T.S. Giselle and buy a little piece of bussy, that's all right. Let him buy that piece of bussy. Let him spend those $30 to get that bussy. <laughs> get on in here, T.S. Giselle. T.S., hop on in here. Hop in, T.S. Giselle. Oh God. Right. And speaking of money and the crowd, um, if you look at a jumbotron, <laughs> big back man, ugly, it never gave, honey. Okay. That's the flagship Louis Vuitton store in Paris on Champs Elysees, where universities like. Okay, well, you should have. AKA. Hold on. I, I, don't interrupt. You should have got a Where phone. the Dusties like... Go ahead. Where the Dusties like Sophia and Seely will never enter, a.k.a. Crooked Weird Nikki the Guy and Juicy Genius. Oh. You girls will never step foot into the flagship <laughs> store of Louis Vuitton, honey. Oh, no. You <laughs> do not disrespect biological women sitting over there looking like Gerald Levert. But go ahead, T.S. Giselle. Say what's on your mind. Say what's on your mind. Go ahead, unmute your microphone. Looking like Gerald Levert, but stepped into the flagship Louis Vuitton store. Those chests are 30,000 euros. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Right. And has has Peanut been to the flagship Louis Vuitton store? Well, um, she doesn't huh? have to go. She doesn't huh? have to go. Exactly. Anyway, let me get to, I just want to throw that in there. What I really want to get into is this. I'm really about to tell you uh -oh. a new one. Um, hold on. Let me get my stuff okay. together. Oh, you got customers calling. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Them 30. I wanted, no, but go ahead. Cat Williams said that 2024 was the year of truth, the year of reckoning. Yeah. Um, and clearly the year has developed as such. Um, with it cultivating on November 5th um, when Kamala Harris um, destroys Donald Trump and wins the presidency of the United States and is the first HBCU graduate um, to hold the highest office you know, in the land. But I want to talk about um, a clip that's resurfaced of you 
um, giving praise to our Haitian brothers and yeah. sisters. However, today, today, Mr. Nasheed, you allow a lot of hate and vitriol against our African and Caribbean brothers How? and sisters to matriculate How? around the internet. How? Your minions, aka Major Powder, aka Sir Major, oh, no. and and I don't have no minions, and I still shout out and and deputy. No, I still shout out some of the cool Haitians. Why Clef? That's my brother. I'm cool with Haitians. I ain't got a problem with no Haitians. I did the movie about the Haitian Revolution. I ain't got no problem with Haitians. But the folks over here getting ran down by the white supremacists, you gonna have to handle that. They going to let them handle that. That's my thing. Because so many of the Haitians were coming over here talking about how much harder they work than foundational black Americans. And we talk about racism too much and we just don't work hard. And the we need to stop hollering about the white man. This is what some of the Haitians were telling us. They came over with $2 and look at me now. I got three jobs, and you FBAs are just lazy niggas. Okay. And we're saying, hey, since these white supremacists are running down on you, go ahead and do you. Since we, we, we talk about racism too much, so we don't want to offend nobody, so we're letting them go ahead and hold your own nuts. That's not us denigrating them. Sir Major, hop in, bro. I got a, a text message tonight uh, from Deion Sanders. He is looking for his mascot for the Colorado Buffs. Uh, <laughs> and so Big Back uh, is more than welcome to fill out an application. Uh, we can get that job filled as soon as possible. <laughs> there you go. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, listen, we're we're just telling everybody to hold their own nuts. For some reason, the Haitians over here, the Haitian tethers, not the real riders, because I'm still cool with some of the Haitian riders. I'm still cool with them. Um, they are sitting up here blaming us, foundational black Americans, for white people running them down. Don't blame us. We didn't make them run you down. We haven't been saying nothing. We just been chilling. We're just not coming to the rescue and we're not obligated. Remember, y'all told us we, we complain about racism too much. And a lot of them were coming over here being very arrogant, trying to denigrate us and then telling us, well, I'm here now, nigga. What can you do? You're not going to do nothing. I'm here now. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Now, how's that working? How's that working out that the, the white supremacists are running down on you? And now they keep trying to coax us into the whole conversation. See, whenever Trump goes in on these people, they always try to add us. When Trump goes in on African nations or Caribbean nations, that's not us. But they want us to put the cape on. When when Trump was like, they're ish whole countries in Africa and the Caribbean, they tried to pull us in there to, to defend it. Hey, look at, they're talking about us. They're talking about you. You you say something about it. They're talking about you. I'm not African, nor am I Caribbean. I don't live in no African nation, nor do I live in a Caribbean nation. You understand? Hold your own nuts. Speak up for yourself. Everybody expects us to put the cape on. Did y'all see Al Sharpton was on MSNBC? I, was it one of those shows? Talking about how Trump don't like black people. Trump don't like black people. And he's going in on the Haitians. And all the black people walking around Springfield look Haitian. I said, oh, hell no. No, no. Yeah, they, they're trying to draw us into the whole thing. No, that's a, an immigrant issue that they have. Don't pull us into that. No, no, no. Y'all not going to drag us into it. And no, we don't look Haitian. No disrespect. We don't look Haitian. We know the difference between a foundational Black American and a, and a Haitian person for the most part. We We know the difference for the most part. Unless some of them have been over here for a long time emulating us as much as they can, but you know, covering up hairlines and all that stuff. But we we can kind of tell when somebody ain't FBA. We can we can kind of tell. Okay. 
So there's this thing of always trying to drag us into everybody else's squabbles, trying to include us for support. And we ain't doing that because so many people who are non-FBA, they've been very disrespectful to us. And then you want us to come to the rescue and then you get mad because we ain't coming to the rescue. We ain't obligated to come to the rescue. Let's get... um. Okay, Mo. Amerijit. Okay. I think you you clocked in before Amerijit. I think you one of those um dudes who's trying to get a pen pal. Amerijit, what's up, man? Amerijit, what's up? Hop on, dude. Okay, I'm about to get you up out of here. All right. Let's get Mouse Tony. Let's get Mouse. Mouse, hop on, bro. All right. Mouse ain't saying nothing. Mouse's phone is janky. Let's get American Roulette. Well, we're going to get American Roulette. Building American Roulette. Hop in. All right. Turn your microphone on. American Roulette or Mouse. Okay. Oh, hey. Hey, how's it going? How was it, uh, how was it at the uh, Hidden uh, History Museum? Phenomenal. We had a great time. I thought you were going to come through. Yeah. No. Nah, well, you know, happens when you got wife and kids and all that kind of bullshit. But uh, but no, listening, you know, like you say, foundational black Americans and the differences of seeing between Haitians and Africans. I mean, I'm just a normal ass white guy, but I mean, I can see that as well, you know, mm -hmm. where but white people notice they know they know the difference. It isn't like it's a, you know, something you would, you know, say is bad, but it's very noticeable at times. You're like just in the behavior, you know, and you just adjust accordingly. I think, I think anyone does that. If you're like, oh, well, they're, they're used to, you know, this life. So you just adjust accordingly. But right. You go. And, you know, what's interesting, because um, there are a lot of articles that people have been pulling up. Um, the white supremacist society, they actually prefer a lot of the Caribbean immigrants, Haitians. There were articles where a lot of white people kind of prefer them to work for them for a few reasons. Um, number one, they will work for much lower wages. They will work for very low wages and not say a peep, not ask no questions, not ruffle no feathers. They will be very loyal for very low wages. Whereas foundation of black Americans, we want our bag. We want our overtime. We want our medical. We want our dental benefits. You know, we're going to ask for stuff. We're going to ask for perks. And I talked about this before. Another thing with foundation of black Americans, as opposed to some of the Caribbeans and, and, and immigrants, um, the white supremacists can also talk to them any kind of damn way. You can say little slick, little racial stuff. Around. I keep telling you to tell the truth. Hold on, so hold that on. this doesn't hold get on. ugly. Hold, hold on, dear. Hold on, hold on. I'm talking. Don't, don't interrupt me. Eh? Hold on, slow down. And they understand that a lot of the immigrants they can talk greasy racially around them, and they're not going to say anything. Where they talk that crap around us, you know, we're going to go down to HR on that ass. So we're not going to stand for any kind of mistreatment. And that's what one of the issues is. Now, Mouse, what's going on, ma'am? Now you can speak, dear. Go ahead. Mouse, I, can, I can't hear you. Go ahead. Unmute your microphone, Mouse. Oh, tell exactly what's going on. Don't buttercup it around. Don't, don't buttercup them anymore. They've had enough buttercup. It's over. It's done. They've been stomping on everybody's neck. It's done. Tell exactly how it goes. Quit butter cupping around. Okay, I don't sweetie, like you, it anymore. What are you saying? What are you saying? I don't know what you're saying. I'm saying that you're acting like we still have to talk like, oh, they're good and they're doing. No, they're not. Who? Who's not good? What are you saying? What are you saying? Who's not good? Everybody that's acting out of line needs to be called out. It needs to be called up to the par. This is bullshit. 
We're butter cupping around them. Okay. This thing buttercup, ma'am. I don't know what you You know, you're being real nice. You're, you're talking real nice about it. It's not nice what they're doing. They're stepping on people's necks. They're stepping on people's children. They're fucking... No. Let's watch your mouth. Yeah, let's, Everybody we, needs watch. to be called out exactly mm. what they're doing when they're doing it. Okay. All right, Mouse. Thank you so much. She's talking in code and just saying the same thing. I think, I think it's meth. She might have had a hit of meth because she's like, "You're butter cupping, dude. You're butter cupping." Okay, that's the meth talking. You're gonna have to put the meth pipe down and just kind of be literal. I, I'm not trying to sit here and decipher meth babble. You know, you got to bring it straight to the middle. You're stepping on necks and butter cupping, dude. The hell is a butter cup? That's some real white hillbilly shit right there. What the hell is a butter cup? the hell is buttercup <laughs> let's get whole grain whole grain waffle and that waffle looks very good on your page what's up whole grain waffle hey how's it going man i'm good how you doing whole grain whole grain where you at brother uh oh i think he's at waffle uh -oh. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. No, I, were you talking about the Haitians or something like that in Springfield? Is that what you were talking about earlier? A little bit, yeah. I touched on it a little bit. Yeah, what about that? No, I just think like the broader principle of when you throw 20,000 people into a town of 60,000 people, like regardless of, of anything else, like – you're going to have a problem like holding all the social services together. You're going to have, you know, food flying off the shelves because of the increased demand. And I talked with the guy, uh, Anthony Harris, who was out like interviewing people. And he was saying that rent in like really bad apartments went from like 600 bucks a month to 1200 bucks a month, like overnight because of the increased demand. Um, so, I mean, that's just, and then you have like the whole cultural differences too. Like, that's just the tough thing, in my opinion, is when you throw 20,000 people into a town of 60,000, like that demand, that town can't handle it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. There's a lot of people complaining. A lot of people are complaining about this stuff. Let's get, um, let's get Banana. She's been waiting for a minute. Banana. Hey, Tariq. How you How doing? You doing? <clears throat> uh good um that guy who was talking about you know black people they're gonna do this and with the money whatever that's nonsense we have to stop looking at the the water with looking at it as it's half full you know it's uh half empty i should say anyway uh two points um whether you like diddy or not you got to admit that diddy put buku people on he put hella people on right oh yeah oh yeah he put a lot of people on. And then um, really quick, I just want to say, um, you know, I live out here in the L.A. area or whatever, but, not, um, but I'm from New Orleans. And they did a big, big, big second line for Frankie Beverly today out there in New Orleans. Um, I don't know if you, you're familiar with the second lines and stuff when they dance in the street and do all the stuff with the umbrellas. They showed up for him tonight. I think that had to have been like his second, third or fourth home because he performed so many times out there, especially for the Zulu ball around Mardi Gras time. So um thank you for being so uh real when I when I saw the movie um in LA for microphone check. You were so normal and regular and cool and anybody that wanted a picture or wanted to come talk to you, you was just hands down like just real genuine. I appreciate that about you. Thank you thank so much. Appreciate you beloved. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I keep it 100. What's up, Joe? What's up, man? Uh, just wanted to say, man, you know, we've all been deceived. You know, the Bible says deceived. You know what that means? Like, she brought up P. Diddy. P. Diddy is not who you think P. Diddy is. You know, Epstein, P. Diddy is like Epstein for the black people. Mm. You know, I'm just telling you the truth, man. I okay. can't help it. You can't handle the truth. But you're going to soon find out what, what the reality of what's been going on. I'm just letting you guys know, you know, I, 
I came from the same area, you know. I I, I can relate, but I've seen what, what the brainwashing. The brainwashing go what on, area? and I see the way you talk. Nobody owes you anything, but one one, one people, and it's the same enemy. And as soon as you wake up to that reality, you, you won't wake up. But it's coming to you. I could feel it coming. It's coming like an avalanche. But you, you're you, soon going to find out, my brother. Joe, slow down. Yo, slow down. You're saying we don't deserve reparations, Joe? I didn't say nothing about reparations. Oh. I don't oh. really care. It ain't me that's going to be paying you. It's the liberals. The people you worship and kiss their feet. That's oh, who, uh, where the slave owners. But thank you very much. You don't know me. I don't like liberals. I really don't. You don't know me, brother. I do not like liberals. I cannot stand. I understand, them. but but we're all going to wake up in this together. You know, we're all the same. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. I'm just letting you know, man. I'm not racist at all. Not not at all. But I just can't stand to sit here and listen to a bunch of brainwashed people. You know, with <laughs> propaganda, and I could see the hatred in both sides. Who's brainwashed? Every one of us, to a I... certain extent. You're saying about some are coming out, some are still brainwashed. Yes, sir, you are. I Joe. can tell. Uh, now, well, how am I brainwashed, Joe? I can see the hatred towards the white people, just the normal white people. Uh, where did and, that's and, a and I can, I, can, I can feel it. Joe, man. It's Joe. all in the air, it's all over. Projection, Joe. Nobody here, I don't hate white people. Nobody here hates white people. What yeah, gave but, you, but you can't you can't help yourself, man? I can what tell by what your tone, dude, that Trust we me. hate white people. No, no, I'm just saying, dude, I can tell by the way you talk to white people, the normal white people that are just poor and depressed, just like you and everyone else. We're all how being used. To, We're being used against each other. Have, how do I talk? Up and re Slow down. You don't talk over me, Joe. How do I talk to white people? How am I supposed to talk to them? I didn't know I was supposed to talk to you guys a certain way. How am I supposed to talk to you? Joe? Well... Maybe it's the way you're talking to your uh, fellow, you know, colored people or whatever. Oh, you know, it's the same thing. It, it's just the the hatred. I can feel it, man. Oh, and I'm tired of. I'm I'm not going to sympathize with this bullshit anymore. I've had enough of it. Joe, been, you're rejecting. I grew up in it. I've had enough of it since I was a little kid. I grew. I didn't even know what the shit was until. I Joe, you're projecting. Nobody here has said anything hateful towards white people. Nothing. You actually been pretty good. The white people have been calling up. I've been very cordial to them. So what are you talking about, Joe? There's been white callers. I've been nothing but cordial to them and everybody else who called them. You hate whites, dude. I can smell it on you, brother. But what are you talking about, Joe? <laughs> what kind of projection is that, man? Hop on in here, Joe. What's going on with you? Joe, I don't know, man. <laughs> Joe, uh oh, I can't back. Uh oh, put the pipe down, Joe. Uh oh, he's lighting that pipe. Joe, put the pipe down. We don't want you to have a relapse. Okay, we'll, we'll get him in a minute. Joe has to hit the pipe. Okay, Joe's up here projecting his anti-blackness using old outdated terms. <laughs> I'm not a racist, dude. I love the coloreds. I love negras. I'm not a racist, dude. You guys are freaking brainwashed, buddy. You're brainwashed. I can smell the hatred of the white man, dude. We're all the same people, dude. You just want to rape our women, buddy. I can smell your cocks, dude. I can smell them, dude. You got your cocks out right now, buddy. I smell black cock, dude. <laughs> what the hell, man? I smell colored cock, dude. I smell it, dude. I can, I can taste it, dude. Okay. What kind of weird projection is that, brother? Lord, boy, he called up projecting his ass off. <sighs> Man, terrain, brother, terrain, my brother. What's going on with you, sir? Terrain, walk in the building.
<laughs> What's going on with you, brother? Hey, nothing, man. Nothing. Just um, checking out the space, brother. Good conversation as always. Um, Joe wants you to take off his straw hat, man, and scratch your head before you talk to him. That's what that's about. If you ain't doing that, then he got an issue with it. Yeah, I must have looked some white people in the eye when I talked to him or something. Just really, man, that was weird. Yeah, Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe, sir, I show. I wish you could see your way clear to let me speak to you. Do you mind, sir? Where's Joe? Man, hey, yeah, well, I got to get Joe back up in here, man. What's the and let uh oh, you all right, Terrain? I'm at the uh, I'm at the stoplight, and the train just went by, so I'm gonna try to be real quick. Okay, uh, if you can if you can hear me, um, can yeah, the whole situation with Diddy. I'm not a real big believer in karma, but I do think maybe some of the stuff he's dealing with is because some of the things he might have put his artists through and some of the things he did to hip hop in general. I mean, that could be something. You put energy out into the world and it comes back to you however you, uh, however you put it out. So maybe yeah. that's what's happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It might be some karma thing popping off. It might be that. Thank you so much, brother. Man, man, man. But I I'm going to get Joe back up here later. Yeah, Joe, you know, I, I guess I'm a little direct. I'm very direct when I talk to white people, and they're not used to that, I think. I think they're used to black people. Going back to the immigrant thing, they're used to being around probably black immigrants who kind of, you know, shuffle and kind of acquiesce to them, and I, I, I don't have that energy. I kind of talk very direct to white people and everybody else, and they don't like that. You're talking to white people too stern. You're too uppity, dude. I don't like it. You're an uppity Negro, dude. I think he thinks I'm uppity. Like when I talk to white people, I'm supposed to be like, well, Miss Daisy, I, I sure thank you kindly for letting me be in your presence now. Hey there, Mr. Jones. I just want to let you know that I, I went down there and chopped off some limbs on the tree in the back like you wanted me to. Yeah, I chopped down the sycamore for you. What the hell? How am I supposed to talk to you? Man, please. You got it twisted. What's up, Darius? Uh, Yeah, man. How you doing, Tariq and Sheet? I'm good, Darius. How are you? I'm fine, man. I'm a 20-year-old man living in California. Uh, I have two questions to ask you. So um, you was talking about, like, the immigration and stuff. Um, in California right now, um, I live on Crenshaw and Slauson, um, not too uh, a little bit closer to Lamar Park. You know those buildings right there that they um building and shit by Lamar Park? Yeah, man, that's those are for the immigrants and stuff, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So once, so once Kamala, like, if I'm, I don't I hope she don't get in office, but if she do, man, she gonna give it, you know, to them folks over there. And um, Ooh. I have one more question. Um, with Sean Combs, Sean, I think Puffy, I think he's Somalian, man. I think he got some Somalian mixed in him. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I know his mom is FBA, but I, yeah, I don't know if he's Somalian. I ain't never heard that one. So his forehead is a little wide, but not Somalian wide. So, what's up, Erickson? Hop in, man. Hey, what's up, man? Um, but you know one thing about you, man. Yes. Um, you're intellectually dishonest. Um, I'm dishonest? How so? Intellectually dishonest, yes. Um, you out here telling people, okay, I fuck with the Haitians, I do this, and I like them. But on the other side, you perpetrating hate, and you know you don't like Haitians. But you're telling your people... Projection? No, don't tell me who I don't no, like. No, no, it's not projection. It's, it's, no. it's there, man. It's no. in your tweets. No, it's in your videos. It's what it's there. Did I have where I say I don't like Haitians? It's it's, bro. Come on, you don't bro, have to go out here and say I don't like you know, Haitians. Or you I ain't gonna Haitians. be no lying tether. That's what you're not gonna do. You no, better, man. I'm not. Don't be the. You ain't gonna be a lying tether. I don't like no lying ass tether like you. You better show a tweet where I said I don't like Haitians. Don't project your bullshit onto me. I ain't never said that. Don't lie on me. You're being a lying tether. I hate lying tethers. You're lying. That's what I don't like. I ain't never said I dislike Haitians. No, it's not a, about lying. I can if, you, if you... Come, homie. We ain't got... You don't have anything for us to dislike. Let me keep it a buck like that. What do you have for me to dislike? Huh? Let me let me let me school you on some foundational black Americans. 
we ain't tripping on you. Y'all sitting around here trying to lie on us like we got white people to turn on you. You don't have anything for us to dislike. You understand? If somebody dislikes somebody, they have something that that group wants or whatever. What Trust me, you're a grifter. <laughs> we, we do have, you made a whole movie about, <laughs> about Haitians. How yes. about the Haitian Revolution? History. Don't, Evelyn, yes. don't be out here. You're a grifter. You don't be out here. That's a, that's a homoerotic word that dusty dudes use. Whenever you hear the word grifter, that's a homoerotic word that moist dudes use. Moist failures. All right? That's what moist failures use. Whenever you hear somebody hollering about a damn grifter, that's such a sassy little word. Would you like me to say you're a thief then? Would you like me to say that instead? Sir, you the one. Who take up the people? You the one who. Because of all the thievery and debauchery in your homeland, sir. No, nah, man, that's you. We we're talking about you personally. Yeah, about me, I ain't <laughs> never had. To flee. We're talking about you personally. My big daddy, who ain't never had to flee. I stand ten toes down on my lineage, buddy. I ain't got to flee and steal or right. do anything you because I got a lineage that's deep on this land that I don't have to steal and finesse from no damn body because we have an abundance because we're deeply rooted on this land and in our lineage, sir. So we ain't got to run and scrap and scrape and jump over borders trying to go somewhere where somebody else built, sir. And no, you don't. And, and then talk about them hating on you. Nobody's hating on you. You don't have anything for me to hate, sir. No, you don't. Yes, there is. You made a whole movie. Why don't you make a movie about, you know, FBA? I have. <laughs> made several movies about our culture. I made a movie about Dessaline and the people in the 17 and 1800s. They did wonderful things. You ain't a part of them, sir. The, you're from the Sambo class. Kill those brothers who rode out for the community. The I, I made a movie about people who stand on their lineage and don't flee. That's who I made a movie about. See, you're I, you're, I, 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 you're fleeing ass. I didn't make no movie about you. You a fleer. I made a movie about Dessaline and those guys who stood on business, sir. You understand that? See, you're triggered, right? You're triggered. Oh, I'm you, not you see? whatsoever. This, definitely, you're definitely triggered, man. This is a and 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 the immigration office when you were fleeing your homeland, coming here to eat off us and be disrespectful, and then holler about somebody don't like y'all. You're projecting, sir. Stop projecting your FBA jealousy and hate, Erickson. Nah, there is no projection here, man. Uh, there is no projection. It is. It's the truth. And and you you and your people knows it too, right? You and your people knows it too, but they are out here kissing your ass, and 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 they're not realizing that you making money off of them, right? Dude, so that's so so, so so the other thing. Listen, and, let me look, bro. You don't you can't money shame us. I'm what's called a man. Men are supposed to make money and have a diversified portfolio. You understand? That's what a man is supposed to do. You're not going to shame us. FBAs, we get money right here on our homeland, sir. Bro, I'm talking about you. But no, no, you. No, no, no. I'm telling you about our culture, sir, because you're bringing that whining. I'm talking about the rig Nasheed, not... Talking about you, Musty Tether, who's bringing his whiny, crybaby, failure mentality over here to us, whining about how we make money. Yes, I make money because foundational Black Americans know how to get money. That's a part of my culture. As a man, I get money. As a man, you're not supposed to be fleeing all over the damn place. You understand that? You only know one word. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the only and word you keep saying the whole time. Fleeing. You, you, As a man, you ain't supposed to be running around with your now, Why are you muting yourself? Oh, yeah, you you up in Seattle right now with a Haitian flag. The hell you doing up in Seattle? In a country that we built, talking slick with a Haitian flag. Listen, listen. I'm listening. Right? So you're muting yourself. You, no, you keep. No, I can't even hear what you're saying. Like no, no, you can't either talk. I can stop and let you talk, and then you let me talk. Right? You, but I, if you keep muting, unmuting.
because you're doing sassy tether projections. You making money. Wah. Yeah, that's I'm not, not hey, hey, you hey. can't make money. Yeah, I'm you're okay. taking money from listen, I'm listen to me. You're making money, money as a man on my own homeland. You damn right I am. But no. you you are a victim on your own homeland. What you talking I'm about? Sir, I'm fine. So listen to me. Listen to me, right? No, 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 you're not going to tell me about what I'm doing on my own homeland. I'm fine. I can. I can. I can't tell you personally. I, I can't tell you personally what you do, what, what, I, what you should do, what you need to do. You right? ain't, I can. Listen, right? I'm not getting advice from somebody who has dirt cookies back home, and you're going to tell me some advice, and you can't get your folks off dirt What you got? What you got? I got dirt cookies. What you got? What you got? Yeah. Nothing. What not you got? Cookie. What okay. you got? What not you got? Cookie. You, you personally, you. What you I got? got? Damn dirt cookies. You ain't got nothing. I, I got. But listen. But listen. You, I got more than you. More than me? Yes, I do. You want to put money on it? I, I, I let's put all the money on it. You ain't got nothing. You up there? <laughs> you, you want to put money on it? Running some kind of forex scam or something? Running some forex scam? Yeah. How <laughs> <laughs> I many? How I many? How many people you got you, you got stalking me right now already? How many people you got on my page, you know, stalking me already? Okay, dude, will you get to the point? Because now you're just tether babbling. Because you just talking dumb shit. Because you won't let me talk. Every time I talk, you mute the fucking mic. Because you ain't saying nothing. You babbling like a hoe. I don't want to hear hoe babble. If I want to talk to a hoe, I get an OnlyFans page and, and log on to that. That's all you do with the people with the money you stole. You just pay you pay for pussies with the money you stole. And that's you that's all you do. Stole. You and your fucking followers. Stole nothing. That's you projecting, sir. You tethers always calling up projecting your little old thieving ass mindsets. Nah, you love that word. We not, I don't have to steal money. I'm talented. And I don't flee. I don't have to steal no money. Nobody's ever accused me of stealing money, but you, right. and you are fleeing, thieving, lying tether. And that's why the white people are going in on you. You looking for black mommy and daddy to save you. And we ain't. You love that word, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. You up here mad <laughs> whining to us while the white folks are running your ass down. But you in here whining to us. Go holler at them white people that's clapping. Uh, they, they, not only they... Howard... Go holler at them. It's the white people running you down right now. Talk about y'all eating cat. Who's running you down? Who's yeah. running you down? Who's running you down? You, you're too cowardly to step to them with your punk ass. To step to who? The, the white people who's running you down. Putting out the stories about y'all eating cats and dogs over there and you up here whining to us like a cat. Who's wh wh whining to who? You can't do nothing. You can't help me. Okay, get get your. What you talking about? Okay, I don't want to hear no Thai tongue whining tether. Get off my phone. No Thai tongue ass whining tether. Get out of here. Projecting your little old janky scams. You niggas, you make money. You grifting. Let me tell you something. Any dude who used the word grift, grift is a very feminine, bitch made, dusty nigga word. That's what dusty ass dudes try to project on the cats who know how to get it. You damn right, I know how to get paper. You damn right, I make money with a diversified portfolio like a man. You're supposed to get money like a man. Men make money. Men don't sit around here at no border getting whooped on with a chicken dinner in their hand. That's what men don't do. All right. Let me get some people in here. All right. Kerbins. Now, Kerbins, are you Haitian too? Your last name look Haitian, Kerbins. Hop in, man. What's going on? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, me, I'm personally, I'm Haitian. Okay. So I'm not, you know, offensive. I'm respectful. And I'm not here to argue and do all none of that shit. You feel me? Right. However, um, I have um, something to say, and I think it should be heard. <clears throat> I understand a lot of Americans about Im um, immigration. I get it. it and it makes total sense to me because I'm a patriot, so I wouldn't want the same thing happening to my country, too. So it makes total sense. However, <clears throat> I feel like 
Um, the conversation must confront the core question, right? Why are we Haitian leaving our homeland in the first place? I know many of us are gonna be like, oh, he's just gonna come up again with that US and friends, whatever. But if you don't understand context, then you will never get the full picture. So let me just give it here. I don't think like, you know, why would anyone willingly abandon their family, culture, or identity to risk, you know, journey like around the ocean? like if there wasn't something fundamentally wrong at home so the harsh reality is that haitian haiti has been stripped of opportunity decimated by corruption but here's the thing about corruption when you guys talk about corruption corruption works two ways right in order for corruption to exist there must be corruptors and corrupted right i don't mind that we are the corrupted okay i don't mind because the government but who are those corruptors? Those corruptors are America, are friends, companies. Like basically, they are the ones that corrupt the people in Haiti. Okay, and I'm not giving excuses here, but let me just give the the full picture here. So, yes, it's true that we might mismanage our resources and so on, right? However, I think um, something that all of you guys need to understand is that the way that our system is is designed to fail and there's there are two books that you guys could read about that from john perkins um confession of a, an economic hitman and the new confession of an economic hitman he explicitly explained how you know um, western foreign power uh, use their influence and their power to um basically run the economy of those countries through imf uh and world bank and, and so on so you see, um, it's not that we Haitian don't want to stay home and build our own country. We want to. It's just that our homes has been systemically dismantled, destabilized, and economically strangled. The system we have has been engineered to fuss us out. You know, I don't know if you guys know what they call um, brain drain, Yeah, right? It's like they are using our workforce, okay? Um, a lot of people don't don't understand that there's something that they call forced migration, right? Forced migration is when they create a chaos in a country. Like um, they, Germany basically didn't create a, a chaos in, in Kenya, but they are basically taking 2,005, I mean, um, uh, 250,000 um, Kenyan workers. I don't know if you guys heard about it. Malcolm, let me let me get Malcolm in. Malcolm, Malcolm, the mayor, hop in, brother. The, the government, the government, uh, the government, the, the government. Yep. Yo, man, listen, bro. We done been through all of that, bro. We not trying to hear that. Our government did the same thing plus more, bro. Come on, man. That's all sure, I had I'm to not, say, I'm man. Not, I'm not here to the argue. government, the government, I'm not here to argue the government. With you. Excuse me, I'm not here to argue with you. So you see, I came here respectfully, right. not you know. Um, acting stupid or whatever. So I, I, I demand that mutual respect. If not, I'm just going to go down. I don't mind having a conversation. I don't mind. But please yeah. do it respectfully because I'm being respectful to you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Okay, Because, yeah, I, I respect your explanation because I've heard it a million times. But I do want to because I think cause it's like it's, it's going to get into splaining. And my man Malcolm made a good point. Listen. You're talking about how America corrupted you. Look, we live here with these white supremacists. They haven't corrupted us to the point where we're doing all of that devious stuff to each other. We live up here with them. They have not corrupted us to the point where we're living in shanty towns and all of that stuff and just complete deviance all over the place. So, yeah, we ain't buying that one. Y'all can get on code if you want to. Y'all can shake the bullshit off and get on code with each other. Even through the corruption, we live around these white supremacists where we know how corrupt they are. We know what they try to do. We've seen them firsthand and we still know how to build and get on code. Even among them, we know how to build and get on code and not let them have us down bad as a major collective. We know how to fight against that. So we're not trying to hear those excuses. And then. Y'all come over here after we fight to help you get here. Let's be very clear. Y'all are able to come over here because of us. And then turn around and start talking damn greasy. This is why 
we're telling people to hold their own nuts. We ain't about to jump up here with the cape. Nobody's hating on you. And I don't like people lying. Guy calling up here, lying his ass off. That's what we don't want to be around. We don't want to be around lying tethers. I'm like, you, had, you tweet like you hit us. Like, what tweet you talking about? I just feel it, nigga. Just making up stuff. That's what we don't want. My sister Brooke, hop in. Hello, good night. How are you? Hey, below you. Yeah, Hello? You're still it's very. very... Oh, oh, you got on. Oh. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're yeah, you're very... very. Let me, you got. got... I'll get you back on. Yeah, the, the reception is very, very bad. The reception is very, very bad. But yeah, man. You want to see why so many foundational black Americans, nobody's nobody's hating on you if you are a foreigner, especially from the Caribbean. You ain't really got nothing for us to hate on. I take offense to you thinking we're hating on you like you got something to hate on. You ain't got nothing to hate on. We're not you don't have anything for us to be like, oh damn, he ain't shit. We know. We just ain't putting the capes on. You understand? We're not even thinking about you like that. So y'all sit around like a lot of Africans and Caribbeans, not all, but they sit around just kind of talking about us all the time. Even over there, even in the UK, on Clubhouse, they sit around talking about us all the time. You got cats who's all the way in South Africa calling up worrying about what we're doing politically. You got cats calling up here that have nothing to do with our political um, landscape. Hey, who are you niggas voting for? I'm like, Dude, aren't you in a, a shanty town in Johannesburg somewhere? Doesn't matter, nigga. Who are you voting for? Trump or Kamala? Like, damn. The hell is it to you? Huh? People stay in our mix. Let me try Brooke one more time. Brooke, let me get you again, beloved. We got a lot of people in here. We got 1,600 people in here. We in here heavy. What's up, Brooke? You want to try it again, dear? Yes, I switch phones. There it is. What's going okay. on? Brooke? All right, so just two things. So one, I just want to remind people that um, the biggest thing that I got out of 1804 was that the Haitians killed, murdered, took out, removed them off the board, took them out the paint, the black collaborators first. We mm -hmm. haven't done that, so leave us alone. And then the second thing is how come when whenever they have the argument that America did X, Y, Z to them in their countries, my question is, well, then how come when you come here, you don't want to fight, revolt, and join with us? Right, right. Why exactly. do you come over here and want to join the oppressor? I don't understand that. If so much of this happened, why do you come here and identify with them when you get here? That's right. it. Thank you, dear. Yeah, and I always say that to a lot of the African and Caribbean immigrants because they, they well, it was America who helped destabilize my country. Then why are you fleeing to the place that destabilized you? Yeah. If the if Ukraine did something to the U.S., I'm not going to the Ukraine. If the Ukraine dropped bombs or something over here, when when they did 9-11, when they flew those planes in the building, I didn't want to go to Saudi Arabia. Kind of ass backwards ass logic is that? Yeah? You want to run to the people that attack you and destabilize you, allegedly. And then when you get here, you, you tell us to stop talking about racism. I ain't buying that. Y'all be the first ones coming over here telling us we 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 yell at white people too much. You niggas is not the white man. Leave the white man alone. Eh? I don't want to hear all that. Malone. What's your name, brother? Malone. I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Malone. What's going on, brother? Hop in, sir. Malone. Mr. Malone, hop in, sir. Hey, Tariq, what's up, man? What's going on with you, brother? Nah, nothing much. You know, I'm listening to your space. You know, I'm minding my own. I'm like, okay, cool. It's all good. Sounds a good conversation. Until you, you had to, until you had to throw South Africa in me. You, no, you had did what? to do that. 
I had, you had I, your What's going on with your mic? Can you can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, now, are you are you South African or Haitian? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm South African. I'm not Haitian. Okay. There you go. Okay. Now you said I said what about South Africa? You said some slick about South Africa. It's like what? I'm like, oh, what? don't put South Africa in your mouth. If we if we're not in your business, we're not in your business. Y'all stay in our America's business. business. All y'all stay in our business. This y'all. Some of y'all. No, some we don't of y'all. We don't stay in your business. I, th- I think I think one thing you must distinguish is South Africa is a very proud nation, number one. We don't migrate. We don't flee. We don't go sort out issues in other countries. We sort out our issues. So much so that your, your own, you, you Americans, gave us $8 billion to, to transition on bullshit that we don't want. So you see, you guys are in our business at this point. So next time you put South Africa in your mouth, just know I'm here. And okay, you want to talk about our business? You better understand it was us that was helping get apartheid off that ass. So let's be very clear: it was foundation. I'm not mad about that. I'm not right. mad about that. Be that clear. I can't take away from you guys. All right, let's just be clear historically, because that was us over here stomping down to make sure that um, them Afrikaners weren't stomping down on you. All right, let's be clear. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. There and you that, go. That, that, that I give you kudos for, and yes, that's one thing. That's one thing we appreciate you guys for, right? Hence, yeah. hence I had to come back. I'm, I'm not fighting right now. I'm just saying that if you're going to talk about South Africa, just come correct. Don't just lump us with Haitians and... and, and- talking about a few because i got a lot of love for south africa they when i went over there they showed me nothing but love all right i'm talking about a handful of cats who i know they don't represent the whole but it's a handful of cats who do little slick stuff that's what i'm saying just like with haiti just like with Haiti, i do not have a problem with no damn haitians i'm cool with haitians i, I got folks over in haiti that i'm hella cool with to this day people over here from haiti that i'm cool with now the tethers no, I'm not. And tethers will get checked. All right? Y'all got some little disrespectful, just like the guy who called earlier, a little disrespectful Haitian tethers, wherever you're from. If you come over here with disrespect, let me just be clear for anybody. Let's be goddamn clear. It's a new vibe and a new day. This shit where y'all come over here and disrespect foundational black Americans, those days are over. We had enough of that bullshit because we got too many bumps and bruises getting y'all asses over here. I want y'all to be clear. If you are over here from a foreign country and you got melanin in your damn skin, that's 100% because of foundational black Americans. Y'all try to mind screw yourself into believing that white people just like you so much. White people did not want none of y'all coming over here. In, in many different waves, in the early 1900s, after the Caribbeans were down there um, building the Panama Canal, after that was done, they wanted to come here. The white people were like, oh, hell no. Stay y'all black asses down there. Y'all cannot come here. That was a grassroots movement coming out of Tuskegee. Brothers and sisters saying, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're going to bring this thing to a halt if you don't let some of those um, Caribbean and African brothers and sisters come over here. This was around 1915, 1916. That's how Garvey was able to get over here. We were stomping for that. In the 1960s, same thing. We were letting them know on the tales of the civil rights movement, hey, let some of these African and Caribbean brothers and sisters over here too. Because we got a Molotov cocktail for our civil rights and we got another one for them brothers too. We were bombing people to get y'all over here. Don't get that shit twisted. We were putting in work. Cats out here going to damn jail to fight to get your ass over here. We were stomping for non-black and non-white people. Foundational Black America, the Black Panthers going over to China and Vietnam, Muhammad Ali, our icons putting their careers on the line saying, hey, I'm not going to go bomb those people. You're trying to draft me in a war so I can go harm them non-white people who never did anything to me? None of you would ever do no shit like that. Our icons put it on the line for your ass. For anybody to come over here to show any disrespect. And when you came over, we embraced everybody. Yeah, you got roasted here and there. We embraced everybody. You come over here, we look out for your ass. I don't want to hear no damn goofy tether talking about how you got teased as a kid. We all get teased. That's a part of foundational Black American culture. We'll tease you and then embrace you like a brother. 
We don't do that shit you do back in your homeland where y'all have these tribal beefs. Yeah, we'll verbally part of our culture. Don't sit up and act like it's been some kind of two-way hate. We don't hate on no fucking body. You ain't got nothing to hate on. Our parents never told us, hey, don't go to that little Haitian boy house. Oh, don't go to that little African boy house. Our parents never said no nonsense like that. Your parents said that stuff. And a lot of us didn't know it until later. Your parents were doing that stuff. From Makata. Stay away from the Yanks. Your parents were just doing that punk shit. And then y'all try to blame the media. Well, the reason why I grew up hating niggas, I, the, the, the white man and his media, he only show you as gangbangers and drug dealers. And he, the white man made me hate you niggas. That's a cop out. That's such a cop out. The same white man was showing y'all running around with loin thongs on and flies all over you. But we said, hey, those are still our brothers. We still want to go over there and build with them. They were showing you jacked up too. You think they weren't? You think they were showing you in a positive light? That's why we took it upon ourselves to say, no, we're going to show the real history of these people. That's why a lot of the black history icons are from over here. Dr. John Henry Clark, people like that. Carter G. Woodson, some of our phenomenal black historians, W.E.B. Du Bois, putting it down, telling the history of the people over there. Me, with the Hidden Color series, cleaning up the history to counter the white supremacist narrative. Don't give me that excuse that the white man brainwashed you. Stop all that nonsense. And then, you niggas hit us. Oh, we we don't we don't want ungrateful, disrespectful tethers coming over here after we sit up here and extend olive branches and help you get here, utilize our resources. We don't really benefit from you coming over here like that. We don't. The benefit is all one sided. We don't benefit whatsoever. We do it just out of racial solidarity. We don't benefit from your ass. We just understood the power of racial solidarity that we thought we were getting. The only thing we asked was solidarity racially. So when we smashed up against these white supremacists, you have my back. That's all we ask. You don't even do that now. We get out here and stomp down in the street. We look over there. The Caribbeans are twerking. What the hell? We do a Black Lives Matter protest and they bussy popping. What the hell? And then when we call it out, oh, you niggas hit us. I knew you hated us all along. That's why I stay away from you, Katas. But look, we, we've been doing some straightening. That's, that's long overdue. We've been doing some real big straightening, family, because a lot of these folks have been coming over here doing real disrespectful shit for the longest. Y'all remember when we used to take cabs? Thankfully, we ain't got to take cabs no more. We do Uber now. Y'all know in those cities on the east, in New York, in Jersey, in Philly, in D.C., where foundational Black Americans couldn't get cabs? Who was driving them damn cabs? Let's keep it a buck. Who was driving them damn cabs not picking us up? Dark skin tethers. You understand? Let's keep it a buck, family. They've been on that. Ooh, I'm not going to pick that nigga up. Ooh, no, bye, nigga. No, I'm busy. Oh, y'all, they've they been on that for a minute. They've been on that wave for a long time. That disrespect wave has been going on for a long time, man. And now that we're saying, hey, you know what? Y'all do you. We we We're going to do our thing. And you do you, because, you know, y'all ain't really trying to build nothing, so just, just do you. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, niggas. Now it's hold on, wait a minute. No. Do you. Fight, fight for yourself. It's time for everybody to fight for themselves. 
That's what we're saying. And we don't want no flimsy cobbling together of a fake solidarity when you're in a hot seat. You see, everybody's all, they love delineating from us when things are gravy. When things are all good, people love de delineating from foundational black Americans. Oh, no, 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 I'm not black. Oh, I'm not black. I'm Trinidadian, nigga. I'm not black. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not. Well, white man, I am not like those niggas. I am not him. Oh, you would make sure to let folks know you were different, especially when it's something positive. Now, when the white supremacists run you down, we are the world, nigga. We have to look at Martin Luther King's dream of all of us as one. Okay. Oh. Big Fox, what's up, brother? What up, Tariq? Can you hear me? What's going on with you, brother? Hey, man, I'm good. Just getting out of work. First and foremost, man, keep doing these spaces. These are therapeutic, man. I get out of work 12, and then you come, you straight, you hop straight out, man. It's the real shit you do. You ain't got to do this. Yeah. But um, here goes my point right here, man. Look, these other people, like other black people from other places, they just not built like us. They can't they can't walk a mile in our shoes, man. Literally, like y'all bent out of shape because y'all on the news eating cats and dogs and shit. Man, we've been through worse for the last 400 years over here. And we still pushing, we still grinding, we still striving. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And y'all can't even take it. Like y'all weak. But back home, oh, y'all beat the shit out of each other. Y'all eat each other, y'all put each other in tars. Like that, y'all fucked up. Y'all, y'all not us, man. Like, no way, shape, form, or fashion. And you Haitians, really, no disrespect to y'all, but I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. Y'all, y'all really the the face of black degeneracy worldwide. So don't fix y'all mouth to ever say nothing about us, education or none of that, man. Like y'all the face of degeneracy, and to keep it 1,000. My nigga Tyreek is the only one that shed some positive light on y'all asses any time in history. He gave y'all asses a documentary. And looking back at it, he shouldn't even done that. Mm. But you know what? Man, look, y'all forcing our hand. They always talk about, oh, Tyreek, man, he he made DVDs about Africa. Now he dissing Africa. Hey, look at Hey, man, he, he woke up to y'all. Mm. You know, you can't be... Pan African and none of that these days, because we've seen how y'all really get down. Y'all snakes, y'all tribal, y'all jealous of us, y'all envious. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, we ain't never show nothing but love to y'all. Like, from every movie, black movie, black uh, niggas had African stuff, all the album covers all throughout the 90s. Everybody was rapping like black Americans. When we when we on the stage to be seen worldwide, we rap in Africa and everything. And this is the thanks we get. But I'm glad we coming together, man, and delineating. You know, man, keep doing your thing, Tyreek, man. I, I appreciate that, brother. Well, yeah, yeah. And that's another tether talking point that, yeah, you you made money with he didn't call us. I, I make money everything I do because right, I'm a man and a foundational black American. You made money off my culture in Africa, nigga. That ain't your culture. I make money. You over here eating off of our tax dollars now. You talking about making money? You over here eating off the DACA program, EBT. You're eating off us literally right now, off of our tax dollars. I ain't got no money from y'all over there. My money. None of my movies really sold in Africa like that. I ain't got no money. Yeah. And when I went to Haiti, I was giving stuff away. I was giving the money down there and trying to teach the history because nobody else was putting money into teaching that history, which is a thorough history. Dessaline and those dudes were badass. I have a lot of respect for that history. But the Sambo class that turned on those riders, those are some of the people we see now. Dessaline and those dudes, they weren't fleeing. You understand? Anthony, what's up, man? Brother Anthony, what's happening? 
Anthony, is your phone good, brother? Okay, Anthony's going through some things. Anthony, when you get your phone together, let me know. Let me get my sister Nikki the God in here. Nikki? Peace and blessings, Flex. You know, while you were live on Sunday, I noticed that um, Garcelle Buva, she is a Haitian immigrant actress. Yeah. She made a rant. I was wondering if you if you saw that video where she was talking about people talking about Haitian Americans and how Haitians need to vote. I was just wondering what you th what your opinion is on, you know, her comments. My opinion is um, I never heard her speak on Haitians in her whole career. She also she married a white man and had two white two little white little boys. Did I have never heard her speak. I never heard her say anything about being Haitian or say anything nice about Haitian people until this now. So I was just wondering what you thought about it. Yeah, the, and I, I got to hear the rant. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh. I saw the video, but I didn't really look at the whole thing. And yeah, she was married to a white dude. From, didn't, didn't she have to pay this white man alimony or something? It was something like that. If I'm not mistaken, she had to pay this white man alimony, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah? So Anthony, you ready, bro? Okay, Anthony's phone is jank, jank. So let's get um, Black Native. Hey, good morning, Tariq. Good morning. Hey. What's going on, brother? Um, I just wanted to say, I don't know why, and I don't have an issue with Haitians at all. But I want to know why they don't have the same smoke for France. France made them pay a hundred and I think a hundred and twenty million dollars back in reparations for 1804. Mm -hmm. And our government, the one they complain about so much and the one that they move to so frequently has given aid of one hundred and forty six million dollars. They said United States is the number one humanitarian for Haiti. So I just want to know why they don't have smoke for the for France. I would think that's where all the anger should be uh, addressed at. And why are they angry with FBAs? We didn't come up with the that we're eating cats and and you know kidnapping ducks and pigeons. Those are white folks who came up with this lie or the truth. We don't know what it is. They don't have smoke for them either. So all right. their anger is put, they put all their anger on us for some reason, and we've done right. nothing but show love. And right. I just want to land on that, brother. Thank you, dude. Yeah. Thing where they're attacking us and coming in my spaces and writing articles talking about what Tariq started that lying on me. The fuck, you coward? I think that's cowardly as hell. You too cowardly to step to these damn white supremacists. So you sit your asses over here lying on us. The, the FBS, nigga, they, they made the white people not like us. The white people used to love us. But these niggas been talking about us and the white people are listening to them. That's cowardly. Percocet, what's up, man? Percocet, want to hop on? Unmute your microphone real quick. And if Percocet ain't saying nothing, let's go for two. Oh, 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 my bad, mic check, mic check. What's up, Percocet? Peace. Yo. Peace. I appreciate that question. I'm I'm doing good. Appreciate it. Yo, as a Haitian American, I feel a lot of your points, but y'all bugging. How so? That cat shit, or we're begging y'all to come save us because these white people are talking about us because we eat cats. We nobody's coming to beg y'all to save us now in 20. We've been going through that since the 70s. Y'all and white people been saying we got Haitian body odor. We eat cats. We getting rushed by black Americans, Jamaicans, white people, Irishmen. We have an attitude and a chip on our shoulder for that reason. Let me address the cat situation. May I? Go ahead. There's certain sections in Haiti in the mountains, poor people eat cats. Just like certain sections in Georgia, they eat possum. Not everybody in America eats possum. Majority of Haitians don't eat cat. Stop that. That's two. You heard? Go ahead. I'm not. I'm not interrupting you. Go ahead. No, I appreciate you, bro, because I'm a fan of you. Go ahead. And I see what you've done, but I think you kind of out of pocket 
by trying to create the illusion like we sweating y'all now because some crackers is telling us that we eat cat. We don't but, need y'all votes. We finna vote November but, 5th. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, brother. Like these cats have been calling up and on our social media attacking us, but ain't saying none to these white people. So, yeah. Why okay, who is that? No disrespect. Right. Who is okay. calling you telling us we need help? We don't need help, nigga, on that tip. We what? don't need help to try to calm down these some racist ass crap. Yo, we want our independence from Napoleon, bro. We are against the world in what we in 2025 for. Because of that reason, this is why we still go to it. We fighting blacks. There was a yank who just called up. That hurt my heart the way he was talking, son. He told my little, we showed y'all love, and now y'all, you know, nobody's begging you, bro. We, we a small one. country. We ain't get, shit, but we beat on. Napoleon, bro. Hold on, let me get Sir Major in here. Sir Major, hop in. Hey, what's up, Tariq? So, uh, just clarification. Uh, he talked about what he didn't need our help for. He certainly needed our help at the Del Rio border when his people failed to act to defend you all. When you guys were getting corralled, 10,000 strong. You guys were still corralled by the uh, U.S. Border Patrol on horsebacks. Uh, our civil rights leaders went down to the border against our wishes to defend uh, your interests. The, another thing. May I ask the year? Sir, sir, what year is he referring sir, to? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. What year is he referring to? That's sir, I'm speaking. A year ago, but go ahead. Yeah, so a few days ago, we've been a doing year spaces, ago. We've been doing spaces recently, and mm -hmm. a few, uh, one of the gentlemen that you just had on the stage uh, earlier, Tariq, is um, Curvin. Curvin got on stage, and I quote, admitted, he was one of many that got on stage and says, yes, I eat cats, it's delicious, and I'm going to continue to eat it. And he was being sincere. Uh, we talked about the texture, how he likes cooking his cats, and things of that nature. Uh, the last thing I'll say is this. We've had plenty of Haitians get on the stage and talk about why they eat cat. Some of them just love the taste of it. It's like a delicacy, like escargot. Um, we had Haitians here in America say that he goes to events and things like that. It goes to his um, girlfriend's house and her family, her Haitian family, prepare a cat dish for him. So let's not act like there's not a fine distinction between voodoo. Let's not act like there's not a correlation between voodoo Never mention voodoo. You, you, see, you see how they, crackers they do? I never mentioned voodoo. But let's talk about the cat, since yes. you mentioned that, sir. So, so again, there's a fine distinction and there's a correlation, too, that yes, we sir. all know to be true between Haitians, voodoo, and eating cats. What do you know to be true, sir? Speak for yourself. Thank you, Trick. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, I told you. You see how these crackers do? Well, they don't like answer the question, bro, and they try to turn us against each other because we fucked them up in 1804. But sorry, sir, now, let, let me say this real quick. No disrespect. As I mentioned before, there's 10% of Haiti that eats cats. There's 10% of Americans that eat possum and squirrel. Stupid. Not go ahead, Ty. What, what's Derby. he talking about? Ellis. Ellis Wait, would you go ahead? I'm here. Go, Ellis, go ahead, brother. What you need? No, no. I just was seeing what he was talking about. Who, okay, what do you ask this? me? What, what you mean when I'm talking about? What you need to know? Well, who are you and where are you from? Don't worry about it. I told you I'm okay. Haitian and y'all violating. Y'all yeah, gotta be gross. responsible when you're on the internet talking about black folk and you black, stupid. Responsible for what though? How you are perceiving black people when talking in front of these racist supremacists? Ain't that the top topic of the day? So when were we ain't, ain't we about black people talking about how Haitians eat cats because some crackers sparked that in the news? And now we're begging you black Americans to save us. You stop that. Ain't no. nobody begging you to save us. We finna vote on November 5th. We finna Whoa. see who wins, Who's nigga. Hold on. Now we got we got Wani spots. My sister Wani. Go ahead, Wani. You have no power, and you're not gonna tell us that you're gonna eat our house pets. Who told you that, Goofy? You see, why are you let your tea? Your tea. We're you gotta stop letting the on these bum bitches on here. Hold She's on. not being real. Let people hold talk. On, hold, on, hey, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hey, check this out. We don't do. We don't do. No, no. We don't do that, bro. We don't do that, Perk. You understand? They do. We do that we don't they do that. Violate people's cats. 
dogs, they, they sacrifice things, and they expect us to absorb all that bad behavior. You don't have anything to do with us. White people don't absorb ethnic people that come over here that identify as white, and we don't have to absorb you. Simple as that. Yeah, let's go ahead, brother. No, I'm just saying this brother right here got, look at this profile pic. It should tell you enough about this nigga right here. First of all, I'm not trying to get on here and disrespect no Haitians or that, but it seemed like you guys good looking. want the attention. Go ahead. But bro. what did you oh, hold up? No, no black. No, no, because you kind of kind of came disrespectful. You can't kind of came respectful. What do you don't like what I said, son? I'm sticking up for Haitians. What do what, we don't eat cats is 10%. What don't you like? You talking right now. I don't like you the behavior cats. how you disrespecting a woman, first of all. Oh, but she came in violating, but you didn't see yeah, that part, though. Violating. The problem is, is that you got, like, when people come over here, right, and it's not everybody, but you come over True. here with a different culture. You see what I mean? Right. And then you get mad. You come mm -hmm. in with a different but culture. But why am I getting mad? Get... Do you ask yourself that? Because you violating. If I, make violating. A, if I make a distinction, let, let me just say, let's say you Polish, right? And I say, yo, all Polacks eat fucking cat. And you know, 80% of Polish people don't. You're not going to be offended, son? Yeah, but, but nobody gonna said... Do, what are you going to do about the Haitian people that are eating people's pets, though? What are you going to do about that? Uh, until I find up? out... Let me tell we you, Pumpkin. Well, no, until I, until I find out. You telling me you found out. You we live in fucking in, in, in Ohio, bitch. And where do you live? Show Why me the video. Their names, though? And where do you live? Oh my God, the chivalry! Yo, T, can you jump on here and get us back to normal? Yeah, we're we're talking, brother. Yeah, we're, we no, but he's bugging though. What bugging I mean by he's bugging, you are now you are you you are fucking narrated. You supposed to come and be like, okay, that's irrelevant. But I'm letting the point. Guy's a clown. I'll, I'll be that. Yeah, he's a clown. You won't tell us where you at, where you live. You disrespecting black women. That's the problem that we have. Wait a minute, that, that was a black me. woman talking. Yes, Wani is black. I apologize. You should be able to tell by her voice. And no, I can't. Called, you sound white. Nobody was blanket calling. You, 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 you see how he sound though? No, okay, no beat, bro. What? Who are you? Because I, I think you bugging. You, me and you talking right now? Yeah. You trying to stick up for everybody, trying to be super righteous on your cross? Who are you? And where are you from? I'm from San Diego. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm Don't from San Diego. Gangster. West Coast. The charges, all right. Now, where, yeah, where are you from? Where are you at? Damn, why you need to know that? Yeah, see, that's 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 the problem that we have. It's yo, T, yo, T, you agree here. with that? Yo, peace to the Haitians. Yo, first read. I'm not leaving. I'm listening to T because I fuck with that nigga. He did the video for us. I don't agree with everything. And I'm going to fall back and be quiet and listen in. All right. Peace to everybody. All right, Perk. See, my Perk. See, this is what we're saying. Cats come over here, hella hostile, barking at us, being real disrespectful. N nobody was disrespectful to this cat. You know what I'm saying? Wani, go ahead, speak, sis. I just want to know what their strategy is because denying that you eat cats and dogs and sacrifice things in voodoo ceremonies is not going to work because we have too many videos of that. So it looks like the strategy is to deny those things and then cuss us out because the white boy is on their ass. And I just don't, I really think that's a poor strategy, having these town halls to get mad at us and they're not confronting the people that are actually on their butts and denying it when everybody has, it's just going to bring up more videos of them doing it because the more they deny, the more videos pop up. Right, right. And thank you, beloved. And yeah, they they are they blaming us for the videos. They just this whole thing where they're just blaming us. What the hell are you blaming us for? People are putting up videos of this stuff happening and showing what's going on in Haiti and showing what's going on over here. It ain't us. I think it's very cowardly to try to point the finger at us and i think the reason why they're pointing the finger at us is because we just don't have the capes on let's get dan in here dan ball hey Tariq, how are you thanks for uh, bringing me up real quick just some, just some numbers um i like numbers so yeah the biden harris regime has imported three hundred nine thousand haitians the last few years of which twenty thousand were planted in springfield ohio a town of fifty eight thousand 
If you look at most statistics yeah. from 2018, they estimate the island of Haiti practice and believes in voodoo somewhere between 50 and 95%. Let's take an average and call it 70. If 70% of all Haitians believe in voodoo, which includes animal sacrifice, and you transplanted 20,000 of them into Springfield, Ohio, with no training how to become an American, except here you go, you're in the middle of this town, you have no clue what you're doing. Do you think maybe even if 1% of 20,000 still believe in the voodoo they practice before, they're still going to be sacrificing pets? I don't know why anybody's even arguing. This is a fact. They do it in their homeland. Why wouldn't they be doing it in Ohio? And as far as the black, white, and crackers, and who's blaming who, nobody should be blaming anything. Every American, black, white, yellow, brown, should be pissed off that we're all getting fucking replaced for 15 million illegals. That's who should be fighting each other. It should be Americans, us uniting, fighting the government who just imported a bunch of new voters to take all of our money because that's what our tax money is being spent on, these illegals, so they can have health care and college and homes. I live in California where they're giving them every fucking thing free, but I better pay my taxes on yeah. time. So while we're pointing fingers at each other about white and black and this bullshit, how about we start pointing finger where the blame is and the blame is on the federal damn government for importing these folks, whether they're from Haiti or not. Forget their skin color. Obviously, go to the numbers. 20,000, if 70% believe in voodoo, they're going to be taking the cats and dogs and killing them and sacrificing them. That's just fucking pure math. And math isn't racist. All right, thank you so much, Dan. I know down in Texas, um, I think um, they just said, hey, that Venezuelan... Some of them villain, Venezuelan gangs over there, they, they've designated them as terrorist groups. It's so bad. They said that they are designated, those, they're designating the Venezuelan gangs as straight up terrorist organizations. It's getting insane. It's insane out here. Okay. Two Black, what's up, man? Hey, what's good with you, Tariq, man? Been following you for a long time. A lot of love and respect for you and your family, what you've been doing. Thanks a lot, man. Where you from, by the way, Two Black? Yeah, I'm right here from North Carolina, man. You know, I'm trying to do some research on the uh, lynching that happened down here. Yeah, yeah, we need to get to the bottom of that, absolutely. So what's going on, brother? Yeah, uh, I'd like to know where can I get a copy or where can I read the reparations bill that was presented to the California legislature? Um, Camilla Moore would probably have access to that. Um, I'm trying to see where you can find that. Um, probably follow Camilla Moore, and she can tell you the exact document because um, I would correspond with her back and forth when a lot of these documents were being formed. So the final document, we we would have to find exactly where that is. And that's a very good question, by the way. TPW. Thank you. Um. I wanted to say, um, I'm not sure who the gentleman was that just spoke, um, but I was listening. I have white skin, but when that fella was talking to you of guys like that, um, I had to want to speak. You know, we're Americans, and they're crazy. Okay. And we gotta stick together. Okay. To Are you okay? Because you sound like you're in danger. Are you all right over there? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. good. But I I know about the these people because I have a girlfriend that uh, was a missionary there for eight years, and um she actually adopted a daughter from there, and um they both. Both will tell you anything. It's kind of hard sometimes to get her to talk about it. But the thing about the cats is they use them to for the voodoo. And most of the time, they keep that, that stuff on them, the bones and certain things. They keep it on them. And um, they kill each other over their people. And they'll go as far as eating one another. These people are not civilized. You got two ends, the ends of that island, Port of Prince. You know, you got more of a civilization there. And on the other end, it's Dominican Republic. Um, 
just the other day, they confiscated that president's, Venezuela's president's plane from the minute Republican, Republic, the America did. Did you guys know that or hear that? Yeah, but you're, well, you're, you're very low. It's kind of hard to hear you, dear. So let me have you. I'll just drop you down and get you back later. Let's get Gorper. Groyper. <clears throat> yeah, what is up, Tariq? Big fan. Fucking, we got to do something about these fucking Haitians, man. They come over here with fucked up hairlines, and that, then they try to claim to be black, okay? These, these fucking Haitians aren't black. They're most likely Asian. I've been doing some anthropological research on this. But they come up here, and they claim to be like... Slow down, slow down. So you're saying the Haitians are really Asian? And, and watch the language, because we do have children here. But go ahead, Gorpa. How are they Asian? They eat dogs and cats. Also, also, they eat cats like the Asians. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. This guy. All right. Let me get some. We got a lot of people in here. How many people we got in here? We got almost 2,000 people here in the middle of the night. Um, by the way, since we got 2,000 people almost, y'all need to go get the movie Microphone Check. It's the number one documentary in the world right now. It's number one on Amazon, and you can get it directly at microphonecheck.com. It is the best documentary on hip-hop culture. Very good documentary film. Microphonecheck.com. All right. Let's get Conservative Chris in the building. I ain't talked to you in a minute, Conservative Chris. How you been, brother? Hop on in here. Hey, what's going on, man? Well, you've been hiding, Chris. I haven't been hiding. I've been hibernating. There you go. <laughs> hey, I just had a quick question to you, uh, just what I was thinking, in, in your opinion. Do you think white people had a point when they were saying that, you know, black uh, people were uncivilized? Because it's like 2025, and we can say hey, this isn't right or what have you, but it makes me think, like, are we the more civilized because we've been around white people more? Um, uh, no, 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 no. I'm just asking. Okay. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I mean, Foundation of Black Americans, we've always been civilized and, you know, we've been the the face of morality and that's why people always have to attach themselves to our movements. Um, we've been some of the most fair and just people in history and we've stood up for ourselves we fought against injustice we we've stood on moral business no other group has really been like that so we didn't learn that from anybody that came from us that came from our spirit we can't say that the white supremacists we got it from them i mean have they done civilized stuff no oh no 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 you look at the civil rights movement running out there sicking dogs on church women that ain't civilized Burning down orphanages and that ain't civilized. We don't never do shit like that. That's not us at all. So yeah, we already had we 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 had a a a, a spirit in us that is like unlike no other. I call it the spirit of Majara. Nobody has our spirit. That's why we're the most influential people in the world. Nobody on this planet is more influential than foundational Black Americans. That's why everybody emulates us. Whenever time, anytime somebody wants to get some type of um, identity of strength. They always emulate us from different groups. You go to Asia, they're dancing like us. You go to Polynesia, they're wearing their clothes and their hairstyles like us. Even in the, the white LGBT community, the white women studs, they emulate the mannerisms of black men, foundational black American men. They've been dressed like foundational black American men, white queens, white um, LGBT men. Who do they act like? They act like foundational black American women. They try to take on the sassy demeanor of that Southern FBA woman. You understand? We have always been the secret sauce. Our spiritual essence is something that people have always emulated. Ain't that right, T.S. Giselle? I'm speaking on your community, by the way the LGBT community, and the Big Back community, too. Let's get some other people in here. Let's get Paula in here. 
Let's get Paula in here. Miss Paula, how are you, ma'am? Hop on. Paula, hop on, ma'am. Hello. How are you, Paula? I'm good. All right, what's on your mind, dear? I'm not a dude, but I think, I, like, I disagree with you on said, some levels. Okay, like what? Well, like, mostly all of them. Okay, give me an example, ma'am. I don't know. Like, I think sometimes it's easy to just, like, judge people and say okay. that, like, you're going to, like, solve the problems for the universe, you know, whatever you're doing, whether it's, like, math or science or whatever you're doing. But I think, I don't know, I worry about, like, what would I tell my daughter? Like, she really is a person that, like, lives for, I don't know, understanding the universe. So that the daughter biracial? The daughter biracial? Is, is she biracial? Mm-hmm. No, actually. Okay. Uh, I don't know why you brought your daughter. I'm just trying to see where you're going. Where all where do you, you said you disagree. Well, I don't you... know. Why would I say that she's not biracial? Does that matter? No, but you. why'd you bring your daughter up? What are you talking about? Because I love my daughter. But what does she have to do with anything that we've discussed tonight, ma'am? Are you serious? Um, yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're bringing up the universe and your daughter. So I don't okay, know. What you well, if you don't understand the universe and my daughter, then that's a you problem. That's not my problem. Oh, that's a you problem because I don't know what type of meth you're smoking to make you just say random stuff. You're just saying random things, ma'am. No, you, you need okay. to stop. That's not a me problem. That's a meth problem, ma'am. Okay, well, that's disrespectful. But you got to be very clear about what you're saying. You're being rude, actually. But, ma'am, you're, you're... You need you're, to sit down and shut up because you're but, being rude. Ma'am, okay, Miss Daisy, I'm sorry. Ma'am. Okay, I'm not... This is not driving Miss Daisy. You said ma'am. I you're said ma'am. This is not driving Miss Daisy, beloved. Okay. All no, right, it you're... isn't driving Miss Daisy. It's driving Miss... <laughs> Dork. You're going to tell me what to say, ma'am? Driving Miss Yesterday? Like, what, what's that? What's that, dear? Okay. So you're going to be ignorant. Okay. That's fine. You but can be ignorant. You're not saying anything. You're not making any sense, dear. This is what I'm saying. Not, you're, not, you're not making any sense, beloved. That's what I'm saying. Beloved. Okay. Ignorant, beloved, dear. You're just making shit up, bro. Ma'am, what time did your meth, your meth dealer just leave the house? Can you tell your meth, your, your drug dealer to stop stepping on that dope with so much fentanyl? The fentanyl really has you hallucinating, ma'am. He doesn't have to step on the dope like that to stretch it out. Okay? Tell, tell your drug dealer, I said, cut back on the fentanyl. You got to weigh it correctly. You just can't just sprinkle it up in the crack. You need to shut your face before you die. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You just don't sprinkle it in your dope like willy-nilly, okay? So, Paula, so you uh -huh. said you, Paula, you disagreed with some other things about what I've said. What are some other things you disagree with, ma'am? Why are you being rude to me? That's what I wonder. By asking you, what do you disagree with? That's being no, I'm asking, why are you being rude to me when I'm asking you what you're talking about? Um, well, now, what makes you think I'm being rude to you, dear? You're being rude to me, dear. I'm not being rude to you. Dear. Ma'am, it's just, you have, you have ma dear. Ma'am. Exactly. You need to shut up for you sit down. You need mm -hmm. to understand that, like, not everyone is like you, and that's okay. I don't okay. care. Not everybody's okay. like you. I don't okay. care if I'm not like you. In what respect, ma'am? All the respects. Okay. I'm still trying to figure out what you're talking about, ma'am. I'm just so lost. Ugh. You're just like a regular person that's like a loser. Oh, really? Like a loser in every basement that I've ever met. You're the same dude. You're the loser that's always been like the angry person that really? nobody gives a shit about. Yeah, because you're an angry asshole. 
You know why you're an asshole? Because nobody likes you. You know why nobody likes you? Because you're an asshole. So I'm an asshole? Yeah, it's basic. Now, how am I an asshole, dear? You're an asshole right now. How so? And you're cursing me out with white woman profanity. You're an asshole. White woman? Yeah, you're giving me... Profanity? You're giving me Karen. Where are you you coming from? What is a white woman profanity? Karen. You're a a filthy asshole. You're being rude, actually. Okay, why am I an asshole, ma'am? I haven't I'm said. I'm not telling you that I'm. I'm not saying that I'm like better than you. A Karen would say that I'm better than you, but I'm not saying that. What I'm you... saying is I'm confused by your logic because your logic is stupid. Now, why? Why am I an asshole though? What did I do that was assholeish? No, I'm just saying your logic is stupid. That's different than what's, you're an what's, asshole. What's my logic, dear? You don't have logic. It's stupid. That I have logic and it was stupid. So which one is it? No, it is logic is stupid. So obviously you don't have logic because if you had logic, you wouldn't be stupid. Okay. That's the meth talking, dear. No, I don't have, I don't do meth. You know why? Why don't you do meth, ma'am? Because I actually have never done meth in my life. I don't believe you. So you're implying that i do meth which is ma'am, fucking rude ma'am i think you hit the meth pipe right before ma'am you yes ma'am quit I'm calling me ma'am why why ma'am i'm trying to be respectful ma'am no you're really not but if you were i would punch you in the face right now oh you're oh, not that smart Ma'am, why, why are you threatening racial violence against me? Do you threaten? I'm not all... threatening racial violence. I'm threatening stupid violence. You're a you're white woman. Stupid as fuck. You're if threatening... that's different than like, I wouldn't punch you in the face because you're racist. I would punch you in the face because you're stupid. Ma'am, but you're threatening racial violence towards me, ma'am. This isn't the Jim Crow era. Why are you threatening Jim Crow violence against me, ma'am? What did I say that made mm. you want to show violence? Like, where are you from? What planet are you from where, like, this shit is normal? I'm from a planet called Krakatania. It's a planet yeah, full of crackers. It's, yep. a, it's a planet full of crackers who are very violent. So I had to Not flee working. from I had to flee from Krakatania. <laughs> I actually believe you. Yeah, I had to flee. I, I, I fled. Krakatania. And it was the whole place smelled like wet dog, and I had to leave. I had to get on a space <laughs> and come here and come to Earth. You can't just cry or tanny yourself from everywhere in your whole life. You know what? That doesn't work that way. I'm I'm actually this is why so many people follow me. You know, like in the Superman movie, how they dropped off Clark Kent in a spaceship. They dropped me off in Alabama. And Alabama didn't like you that much though, because you were bossy. Became a superhero, and my job was to find all superhero. the races. My job was to find all the racist crackers and neutral racist crackers. Just you like know, I, that's, I was that's, supposed to. That's racist to say that people are crackers. I was no. I'm talking about my planet. My my okay, planet. But saying racist crackers is racist. Oh, it's not racist. It's a planet. Crackatania. It is, no, it's racist if you say racist crackers. No, no, wait, well, that's not racist, ma'am. That's not racist. It is. No, it's not, ma'am. It is racist if you say racist crackers about people that are maybe not your. Do I have to tell you like how this works? I think tell you me, know. Tell me how it works. I don't think so. You know what? But I like you, but you're weird, but you're annoying. And also, there are a million problems. <laughs> I don't know why I like you, but I think you're annoying. And I think you're right on some level. Now, Paula, have you been with a black man sexually when you were in college? Pardon? I mean, in the last 20 years or like? Yeah, when you were in college. Well, hell, yeah, in the last 20 years. College. I never went to college, first of all. Second of all. I don't give a shit about where you went to school. Right. So in the last 20 years, were you sexually with a black male? Um, I 
That's not a trick question, Paula. It is a trick question. I'm like not going to answer that question because that's rude. That's not rude. It is rude. What if I asked you that question? I have not been with have a Have you black banged woman. a white woman in the past 20 years? I have not. I have, have not. You banged her? Have you banged her though? I have not, ma'am. Exactly. Not so don't question I have me. Banged a white woman since 93. That's fine. Right. But also don't ask me that. That's rude. Okay. It, it shouldn't be rude, ma'am. It's just what's rude about asking that? Ma'am. Quit calling me ma'am. Because, ma'am, sounds like you got a hankering for a little soul pole. That's why you're calling up and you're confused, ma'am. Sound like you got a hankering. And that's why you're calling up, beloved. And you're trying to, to fight through your own racism and your sexual desires. So this You know what? That... I actually, I think you're a smart person. I think you're not intelligent in this conversation. But I think you are an intelligent person. Got it. Okay. I don't think we need to argue about what the fuck you're talking about right now because it's stupid. Okay, Paula. All right. Um, and Paula, you're in Canada, by the way, right? Right, Paula? Yes, I'm in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. You probably got a little hankering for a soul pole. All right, Paula. Thank you so much, dear. Good Lord. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Boy, there's some interesting people out here in these internet streets, man. Some interesting people on the internet streets. Very interesting people. Man, man, man. Well, we got almost 2,000 people in the building. We are in here deep. We're in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. We're in here heavy and deep. Uh, by the way, go to microphonecheck.com to get the movie Microphone Check if you don't have it. And y'all need to follow me on my YouTube channel, which is Tariq Radio. If you are not following me, that's Tariq Radio. All right. Should I get a couple of more calls in here? Should I get a couple of more? Because we in here hella deep. We got almost 2,000 people in the middle of the night. I see all y'all down there lurking on the bottom. I see you. We got almost 2,000 people in here in the middle of the night, ladies and gentlemen. 2,000 and then 967 other listeners. So we are in here deep, deep, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's raise your hand if you want to get on. Let's get a couple of more people in here before it gets too, too late. Let's get a couple of more folks in here. Raise those hands. Raise those hands. Where are we at? What's up, Love I Am? I see you, dear. Let me get Love I Am in here. Let's get Love I Am in the place. And then we'll get Scotty in the building. Love I Am, what's up, dear? Hey, Tariq. Um, I just wanted to say very briefly that I thought that this conversation would force the Haitian people to have a Haitian-centered discussion, but they... it. <sighs> I think that what they're doing is irresponsible um, because they were the ones that they literally said they are not black, they are Haitian. And they've yeah. always created that distinction. So I just, this was an opportunity for them to craft a conversation around their own identity and create a lane there and stay in it. But they had to bring us into the conversation. And I just, I don't understand why the, why they would choose to go that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Real talk. <clears throat> Thank you so much, dear. Scotty, what's up, brother? Scotty, where you at, bro? Hey, now. Just here. Hey, in Australia. Did he do it? Wow. Um, did he did? No. Oh, sorry. It's coming in late. All the way from Australia, Tree. He did it. Yeah, what's going to happen? What are your thoughts? Okay, good Lord. That dry Australian wit. I hope you get kicked in your ass by a kangaroo. Hope Kush, what's going on? Hope Kush. Yeah, yeah Tariq. What's up, my brother? How are you, Pope? Where are you calling uh, from? From South Africa, my brother. There you go. What's on your mind, brother? 
Yeah, man, I'm just thinking that um, they should leave Didi alone, bro. The way they left the Jeffrey Epstein beneficiary list, like um, um, Prince Andrew, uh, the Clintons, like everybody who was on that list of Jeffrey Epstein, they are not following them. They should leave that black man alone because um, he was also um, backed up by the same people, you know. They are not mentioning Barack, they are not mentioning Hillary Clinton and all of them. So basically, they should leave the black men alone. Yes, indeed. Thank yeah. you so much, brother. I appreciate you, Bush. All right. Okay. Anyway, well, we're in here deep. Um, don't forget to get your root work deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Root work is the best deodorant out here in the game, and many of you are musty. So you need that root work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. You need it. Even though it's getting wintertime, the summertime you really need it. Wintertime you need it because y'all put on them heavy clothes, and those underarms get real sweaty with them coats. So the worst type of funk is a winter funk. You don't want to be musty in the winter because that musty breeze swoops up and then locks in into the atmosphere. It kind of freezes. And you do not want to walk around with an icy must. You need to get that root work deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. All natural, the best deodorant in the game. Rootworkstyle.com. Let's get. Scalawag, and then we'll get Ikari. Um, Ikari or Scallywag, either or. Which one want to talk first? Ikari? What's going on, Tariq? What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good, my brother. Um, I'm going to let my plan quick. I'm a long-time listener, a big fan of yours, a lot of work. Um, meth madness is real. I don't know how you deal with that, but it's hilarious. Um, and uh. You know, a lot of the, the Haitians, the uh, the tether class, they got to deal with that, man. Um, they got to they gotta send the white mommy and daddy. They can't just keep depending on us. You know, we didn't promote that tomfoolery. White mommy yeah. and daddy did. So I'll let my play. There you go. Thank you so much, brother. Scallywag, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tariq, what's going on, dude? I'm good, Scallywag. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. So, uh... I've been seeing you, uh, you've been trolling the, the liberals a lot lately on um, X. And I was just thinking, uh, where are you looking to vote? I mean, I mean, I haven't heard anything from you, but I know you, you want your reparations. And who knows if you ever get that because this country pro pretty much be fucking in another depression before uh, we know it. But uh, yeah, so where are you leaning to? Man, I'm just leaning towards anybody who's going to do something that's going to empower my community because we need it, because we've been targeted for devastation. And both sides, man, there's a lot of stuff on both sides that I'm not really feeling. Kamala and Biden, I'm not feeling anything that they're doing, nothing whatsoever. Every single policy they have is going to undermine us. On Trump's side, I like the immigration thing. I'm rocking with that. I like that. My thing is, you know, Trump is, they, they, they got Laura Loomer. They're running around with that idiot. I don't know why they're shooting themselves in the foot having racist internet trolls around them. That turns me off. So just both sides, they're, they're just doing a lot of real funny style stuff that's unnecessary. So that's my thing. Now, are you you sound almost ca Canadian? Now, where are you from, Scallywag? I'm from New Jersey. New Jersey, okay, okay. Yeah. So, I'm assuming you you you're voting for Trump, right? Yeah, I'm voting for Trump. I'm like, yeah, honestly, he's not the kind of crazy I want. You know, like I want a fucking dictator, honestly. Like you said, to just round up the illegals, toss them the fuck out, and mm. like. Not a lot of a lot of you black folks think that all us white folks want to round you guys up too, and I do not want to round you up, Tariq. Even though, I mean, honestly, you make me laugh. Some of the shit you say to people, mm -hmm. I like your humor. I like your humor, and I do agree. Foundational black Americans have a place right here with us, and that's why I call you know American nationalists. 
Mm-hmm. And here you guys, you fought whatever, you know, since the fucking French and Indian War, you guys can name it. You guys are right there beside us. You, If anybody deserves a fucking place, it's you. It's you folks. And, uh, yeah, like, I... I I appreciate your your how upfront you are with uh you know you want reparations and you don't hold back and I respect that man so uh, keep on doing your thing. Yes, indeed, and 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 also, Scala, let's be clear: they can't round us up. You know, foundational Black Americans, we real different. We ain't about to get rounded up. We've been here too long and we put in too much work. All right, but thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, they try to round us up. We turn all the way up, and they know how we get down. You did. They they ain't rounding us up. They they look, y'all better understand during slavery we were putting in some damn work. I want y'all to understand some history. They tried to round up the Seminoles. It was only a few hundred of them, and they were lighting the damn US Army's ass up. They couldn't handle them. They had to make a deal with the black Seminoles and send them to Oklahoma. Ain't no rounding us up. When we see some bullshit going on. Oh, we gonna strike back, and when we strike back, we make noise. Oh yeah, they they tried that stuff in the '60s. I, y'all better study the damn '60s and how we put in work around this country. '60s, early '70s. You better study the Black Liberation Army. You better study how cats was getting down. You better study Cairo, Illinois, how black folks ran the white supremacists out that damn town. Bust a cap in the sheriff. You better study the damn history. You know, we, 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 when shit gets hot, you know, we, we know how to turn up. Eh? LA, 92, you better study how cats out here got down. Eh? Yeah, people don't want to play like that. Yeah, it's different when you sneak up on a teenager, you know, eh? Sneaking up on a woman and when she's sleeping in her house, like um, Breonna Taylor, then that's one thing. But yeah, they don't want to go all out now. You know, because you go all out, we go all out. You know, just to put that out there from a historic perspective. Uh, well, we are in here heavy. I appreciate everybody being in here. We are in here deep, and I hope you guys are all following me. Here on X. Let's get Brother Ant in here. Ant CEO. What's up, Ant? Hop in, my brother. We in here. Ant, what's up, Ant? Flex, what's going on, OG? I'm good, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I'm going to be quick. I know you got a bunch of people in the, in the, in the thing. That's why I was uh, doing a little way. But yeah, I was wanted to say real quick, like that whole rounding us up, we don't want to round you up. Y'all ain't got a choice. To try to round us up because it's gonna be bloodshed. It ain't no. I don't want to. I don't want to change the conversation to say. But ain't no rounding us up real quick. We in Detroit. We in Cleveland. We in Texas. We in New York. We on. We on the West Coast. We in the Midwest. Ain't no rounding us up nowhere. Um, mm-hmm. The second point I wanted to say is I think um, with this whole Kamala Harris situation, I think that the reason why I specifically the Democratic Party is trying so hard to try to get a lot of illegals in, I think they want a one party system. That's what I think they want, because what's going to happen is if they bring a bunch of illegals in, they're going to they're going to, you know, keep them together with food, with shelter, with certain grants and things like that for them to get up in, in you know, in America. And they're going to have allegiance with the, with the party. And a lot of us as black Americans are starting to wake up and starting to kind of not saying that we just going for Republicans, because, but but we are starting to wake up to see how the the u.s government operates and we starting to kind of separate from both of us both of them and they know a lot of us don't aren't even willing to really vote anymore so with them knowing that i think a lot of they a lot of them know that so they want to have the allegiance with those immigrants that's coming over here so i think and when 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 they when they do that it'll like i said it'll be a one-party system so they're going to be able to win every single election every four years if people just continuously vote and they keep bringing illegals in that's a little thought i was just thinking about the other day so but i appreciate you letting me up shout out to the family Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. It's a lot of people trying to get in tonight. Uh, y'all raise your hand if you're ready. We got the Joe Biden. This is one. Let me get the Joe Biden parody page on. Joe Biden parody page. You got something to to bring to the conversation, brother? Joe Biden parody page. What's up, Joe? I guess Tarek is going to be a My name's Joe Biden. It's just not a joke. I'm serious. Uh, 
What, what's going on, Mr. Biden? How you doing? That's good. You know, we've got an election. We have for the U.S. Senate. I've got a message to you and your, your audience if you if you allow me to, the chance to, to make a case to the nation. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Tell us what your plans are, Mr. Biden. My name's Joe Biden. You're running for U.S. Senate. If you like what you see, look me up in November. And if you don't vote for me or Trump, then you ain't black. <laughs> So how how's Kamala doing in the the race right now? How do you think Kamala's doing? You know, Vice Peter Kamala Harris, she, she's a great gal. You know, I I, I voted her the first uh, African American <laughs> Supreme Court justice in the nation, and she's been doing amazing work. We we finally we we're gonna go forwards. No, nah, we're not going backwards. You know, we 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 Donald Trump and the bag of Republicans they want to put y'all back in chains. It's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so so listen what do you mr biden what do you think about reparations a lot of the black voters wanted reparations and you guys kind of reneged on the reparations so what's going on with that this is folks this is black you gotta be a big time supporter of black males throughout my throughout my entire political career you may know drink i've been around a long time i was there where we lincoln riley freed the slaves Okay, and, and I, I, I was, I was in corn pop said about reparations. He came with a chain, and I, and I, and, and, and the kids are running their heads on my lap, and the hairs pop up, and, and it's not a joke. So, so yeah, but reparations, come on. Now, now, are you still in touch with Obama? How are you and Barack Obama now? This is for President Obama. You know, I, I worked for President Obama for 15 years in the White House, in the Obama administration. We, we got a lot of work done, but still not so much more to do. There's still more work to do. So I say, you know, vote for November, vote for me and Kamala. We're going to work to unite the nation, the soul of America. It's not a joke. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Biden. <laughs> Uh, it was Joe Biden, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> oh, that's funny as shit. That's funny. Oh, God, that's funny. It's not a joke. <laughs> Biden does say that. <laughs> he sounds... Just like Biden's dementia having ass. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. That's funny. He said corn pop. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, let's get Great Griff. Great Griff in the building. Hello. What's up, Griff? How are you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? Oh, great, man. Honored to speak to you. I listened to you for about eight years, since 2016. A buddy of mine put me on to you for the flash drive. Mm. <laughs> but, mm. uh, man, I got a huge family down here in Louisiana. Man, I have nieces, nephews, sons. I done put so many of them on your videos. I have actually brought the mattress package twice just to give some of them away, you know? Love it. Love it. Yes, sir. But look, this is what I call you for real quick. Man, I appreciate you putting us on game, separating with the delineation and not in a mean spirited way. I just, this, this, I call this is for all the, all the brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Man, the ones who are on code, educate your people who are not on code, continue to talk to them, continue to teach them, give them this, hey, look what Tyreek's doing. Don't take it mean spirited. Don't be mad with the roasting. Just say, hey man, look, the brothers done did their job in America. We need to help them out and back them up. But man, the, the message you give to the youth with the independence, with the spirit, getting the money, man, you had me rolling while us getting money. Yes, we do. We mm -hmm. get money. We hustlers. We always been hustlers, especially down south. And next time you come to Louisiana, especially New Orleans, look me up. Because man, when you was telling me about the food you was eating, boy, everybody where I worked was laughing like, oh, he didn't get the real, real, real. I mean, they got some good stuff you went to. But we got some authentic stuff down here, brother. I appreciate your time. I'm going to land my plane. Good good conversation. Keep it going. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, y'all know how much I love New Orleans down there. I love going down there. Oh, man. Man, man, man. Let me get out of here. I'll be out here all night with the family, man. I'm going to let y'all get some sleep. Because y'all, I mean, we are in here so damn heavy. I'm going to let y'all go to bed, man. And y'all go to rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. And also, all my L.A. people... 
We um we got some more events we're having at the Hidden History Museum. We had a ball this weekend. We had such a good time this weekend at the Hidden History Museum. So we got some more events coming up next month. We're going to have a Halloween contest and comedy night. Before that, I think we're, we're trying to do another poetry contest at the Hidden History Museum. We're trying to do another poetry thing because a lot of folks like that. So we're trying to get that popping. So we got a lot of events happening for the fall season at the museum. But y'all need to come on down. We're going to have a Halloween contest um, the Saturday before Halloween. And we're going to give a cash prize away and have our comics and complimentary food up there. So 